Thank you for getting quiet before I was ready. A lot of pressure. There. Let the record reflect that the meeting is reconvened with all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A motion for the regular minutes of April 9, 2012. I move that. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Welcome, everyone. We have a uh, big crowd tonight. Um, I will cover some of the uh, agenda items a little bit later. But just a, um, for anyone that is here for the hearing on ordinance 14, ordinance 14 thank you, which is the appropriating $90,000 for open space fund for ADA compliant greenhouse. The, when that is called up, that will be a motion to table that and we will not conduct that hearing at this point. It will be, uh, a, Re-advertise, and the hearing will be at a later date if it moves if it moves forward. On other items, I'd like to announce the employee of the month of July, Police Officer Chad Ripka, for his research and implementation of the successful Every 15 Minutes program. Hopefully, uh, for those that were here, um, previous council meetings saw what that. Um, program is all about and uh, some of us were a bit closer to it and it was quite an impressive program and I would, uh, if you haven't had a chance uh, to view the council um, video of that meeting to see or even check the video for the full, uh, of the full program. He did quite a job. It was a lot of extra hours and he is to be complimented for that. And then anniversaries, Nancy Dickerson, the Department of Public Works, her 20th anniversary was July 6th, and Brian Allen of the Fire Department, 20th anniversary on Friday the 13th. Report from the library. Uh, close to 600 children have registered for the Summer Reading Club. About 1,000 children have attended programs held in conjunction with the Summer Reading Club. And today's Summer seminar co-sponsored with the Senior Center attracted 112 people to hear Professor Douglas Simon speak about foreign policy and presidential elections. And the two mini courses that are co-sponsored with Drew University are fully sub subscribed. And if, uh, for the last part of my comments, if uh, <coughs> Caitlin McHugh and Laura Park, Lori Park are in the audience, please step over to the uh, lectern here representing Quest Diagnostics, and we have a big ball game coming up on the 19th. So if you could tell us all about that and where the proceeds go. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Lori Park. I'm the Corporate Citizenship Officer for Quest Diagnostics, and I'm pleased to be with you this evening. Um, Quest Diagnostics is a corporate part, I guess we would like to say a community partner of yes. yours, and we're the leading provider of diagnostic testing information and services in the United States. I'm proud of our relationship with the town, community of Madison and excited to invite everyone to our fourth annual charity softball game and barbecue to be held next Thursday evening, July 19th, to raise funds for the Mayor's Community Wellness Campaign as well as the American Cancer Society, which is Quest Diagnostics National Charity. The barbecue will start at 5.30 at Dodge Field and the Mayor, along with a cancer survivor, will throw out the first pitch at 6 o'clock p.m. Additionally, at the event, we'll have a raffle of, of a range of prizes donated by our own employees as well as local merchants with, as I said, all proceeds going to the, can the uh, Mayor Conley's wellness campaign and the American Cancer Society. Additionally, to help residents stay health healthy, Quest Diagnostics will offer 500 free wellness screening vouchers at the game as well as previously at the mar um, farmer's market. Um, so please join us next week at the game and help us raise money for the Wellness Foundation, Wellness Campaign, and for American Cancer Society. On behalf of Quest Diagnostics, thank you very much. Lori, thank you very much. You. 
And I also want, I want to thank Lori and Quest Diagnostics. This game previously had been held up at FDU and the fact that we've moved it to Dodge Field so it can be right in the center of Madison. So not only can you go watch the game on the 19th, then afterwards you can go visit one of the fine eating establishments in Madison. And just as a disclaimer, I will point out that I uh, did pitch, started one game in the men's softball league and I've retired with a uh, ERA of infinity, so um, <laughs> you may want to have multiple catchers out there. Reports from committees. Public safety. Ms. Sukamoto. Yes, thank you, Mayor. The Madison Police Department responded to 2,401 calls during the month of June. Officers responded to and investigated 39 motor vehicle crashes, issued four. 349 motor vehicle summonses and made 22 arrests, including four <clears throat> DWIs, as well as 88 alarm activations and made 549 various premise checks. Officers were assigned to 74 community policing posts. They investigated six burglaries or theft complaints and 59 suspicious person and incidents and conducted 168 selective enforcement details in June. The members of the police department also attended training in police supervision, firearms, domestic violence, police pursuit, use of force, internal affairs, and field training officer school. As always, the Madison Auxiliary Police conducted foot patrol in the downtown business district and assisted with farmer's market and downtown concert series. The Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps and the Madison Police Department responded to 84 medical emergencies in June. Also, I'm very happy to report that the police department has completely moved to a paperless scheduling system as of June. The fire department submitted an application for a um, Department of Homeland Security FEMA grant to upgrade the department's outdated self-contained breathing apparatus and spare air cylinders in the amount of $132,000. And um, my fellow council members will see that um, there is a resolution in, under consent to support this application. We thank Firefighter Wickman for his many hours of effort on this very lengthy and detailed application. New Jersey Transit confirmed that there was no damage to the train tracks by the Green Village Road tra trestle accident. Madison Police Department and Madison Fire Department were on the scene and able to contain and prevent approximately 100 gallons of hydraulic fluid from reaching any of our catch basins. We thank them for their very quick actions. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Utilities, Dr. Esposito. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> residents and businesses are encouraged to sign up for the Madison Electric Con Curtailment Volunteer Program. Uh, a presentation on this program was given to the council about a month ago asking residents to do their part to help save the borough over $100,000 a year in peak uh, charges. There is excellent information on the electric utility pages on Rosenet that explain the program, the benefits and what peak demand charges are. Those interested in joining the program should sign up for Nixle so they can receive notifications on when to curtail electric consumption. Visit www.nixle.com to sign up for borough updates. This is also a reminder from the Madison Water Department that asks for your cooperation in complying with the following voluntary water use restrictions currently in place. It is requested that all residents and businesses observe both indoor and outdoor voluntary water restrictions. Outdoor use for lawn and shrub watering, car washing, driveway and sidewalk washings, shall be restrict, uh, restricted to alternate days. Residents and businesses whose addresses are even numbered are allowed to use the water outdoors on even numbered days, and residents and businesses whose addresses are on numbered are allowed to use water um, on odd numbered days. There should be no outdoor water usage on the 31st day of July or August. Outdoor water use is allowed from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. and then 8 p.m to 12 midnight on the allowed days. 
no outdoor water use between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. on any day. Uh, for information, you can call the Madison Water Department at 973-966-7330. Um, and those of you who use uh, sprinkler systems and lawn systems, um, um, grass always look greener, um, but it's important that we conserve as much water as we can because it is a vital commodity, not only in our town, but also um, in the world. Um, so make sure when you do water, uh, make sure the, uh, your sprinkler heads are pointed on the grass uh, and not so much on sidewalks or driveways or, uh, or the street uh, to conserve on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Links. Me, um, I report and my report and However, before Bob gets up, uh, Councilman, well, Rob and myself and Bob, we might be looking at the five-year uh, capital plan in the sense of priority. So I want to have that as a chapter for you. Please, Bob. And I will be brief. Uh, Councilman Links, Mayor and Council Members. Um, what has happened over the last two weeks uh, in engineering and public works uh, starts off with a 48-inch uh, diameter storm sewer, which failed uh, last month. We had to go and do an emergency appropriation, an emergency contract to get that fixed. So the, con the company that we hired is called Centropipe Ameridrill and did a uh, concrete spin cast lining of that pipe uh, as we requested last week. And uh, the repair looks 100% uh, in accordance with our requirements and uh, it looks like it was done with minimal damage to any property. <clears throat> it was a difficult uh, location to get at because of the location of uh, New Jersey Transit Rail, uh, a Morris County Park Commission traction line property and a private property that were uh, it was certainly uh, that were part of the uh, part of the repair process. So having the uh, interior lining project done uh, without having to open cut the project was a huge preference for all those property owners concerned and uh, I was very satisfied with the repair. So that was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened was uh, Gen, Gen Electric had come in and completed the flash replacement at Noe and Woodland intersection. For those of you that have been by there, you'll notice that the uh, lenses themselves are bright LED lenses. They're located in much better location than they, than they were originally. There was an additional flasher head that was included in the project and overall uh, far more visible than what, what, what existed and uh, we're very happy with the repairs that, and replacement work that General Electric did um, at that location. Um, Siemens Corp, which you, uh, Mr. Catalanello had uh, referred to uh, two weeks ago as well, has actually completed all work upgrading the chemical feed systems at Candlewood Pump Station. That's something that's been on our to-do list for uh, quite some time through the budget season last year. Um, Matina and Sons begins the Park Avenue Force Main work this week, uh, starting tomorrow morning, uh, per his last phone call with me this afternoon. So hopefully that schedule won't get revised or pushed out, but uh, he's going to start doing uh, excavation work in Park Avenue tomorrow uh, with the supervision of the county. <coughs> and uh, Dennis Harrington, who we've hired to go out and do uh, uh, project inspection for us. Um, last thing on the list, uh, uh, is uh, the Pioneer, Pioneer Pole Buildings Company had come in under contract with David Maines and the DPW to put a uh, storage building out at MRC and uh, that storage building was completed in less than a week's time uh, and they were very good craftsmen and I was very, very pleased with the <coughs> quality of construction work that was done there as well. So uh, that uh, project was completed last week um, and now the sidewalk to the field house was also completed by DPW in-house this past week, and so uh, I was out there this afternoon, and it uh, looks pretty well done, and it looks uh, fully handicapped accessible to me, and uh, uh, we'll go and check on it in more detail later in the week, but uh, nice bit of work there from the DPW for the past two weeks as well. That's the, that's the report. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Link. Finance and Borough Clerk, Mr. Catanello. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I spoke with the uh, CFO today and he informed me that uh, revenue collection was on target for the year. Um, he, uh, I asked him to comment on uh, his view of the electric uh, utility revenue given um, 
uh, the hot weather, uh, he did not uh, have a view. <laughs> Wisely, I would imagine. Uh, and uh, you know, he expects to see receipts sometime in the near future. Um, there are a couple expenses that he is, comp that he is prepared for. Uh, so all in all, things are, are, are quite steady. Uh, I did uh, raise the issue uh, with him as, as well as with uh, the borough administrator about the uh, necessary repairs to the uh, uh, Madison-Chatham joint meeting. Uh, and um, I'm happy to say that uh, Ray was able to, uh, uh, or he's in the process of uh, changing uh, a visit so that we can go out there and actually inspect and make sure that uh, all of the repairs that um, uh, they're claiming, and again, the amount is about $3.6 million, uh, of which currently we would be responsible for approximately two-thirds of that. Uh, we, are, we continue to investigate um, uh, what the actual split should be, uh, and we're going to go check and make sure that everything that uh, they claim it needs to be done actually does need to be done, but that will need to be paid for. And if we are going to bond for it, we'll have to bond in October. Uh, we are examining alternate ways of, uh, of funding that project, but it is required work, and there's nothing that we can uh, we can do. Uh, you know, we have to keep the the, the main sewer plants working. Um, I met with the uh, uh, community garden uh, uh, team uh, at the site, uh, not last Saturday, the Saturday before, and. Um, uh, while they were quite happy that uh, there was so much support for funding the greenhouses, uh, they believe that they will be able to uh, get money uh, through grants. And uh, in an effort not to jeopardize any of that funding, uh, they've kind of asked that we hold off on the second reading. So as you mentioned, Mayor, we will be tabling that discussion until later. Um, we, I did advise uh, them, however, that uh, there is a finite possibility that uh, if, in fact, um, the grants don't come through and they come back to us for the money, it may not be there. Um, not because of any uh, desire not to fund it, but just because of budgetary constraints, uh, and they are well aware of that. And th that is my report. Oh, oh, oh. and uh, the construction uh, review committee will be meeting again on the 26th of July. Thank you very much. Community affairs, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, from the senior advisory committee, free tickets are being offered to Madison and Harding residents, uh, seniors 62 years and older, for the Madison Summer Recreation Musical, Once Upon a Mattress. Uh, the first summer session, co-sponsored by the library, begins today, June, July 9th, with Dr. Douglas Simon speaking on foreign policy and presidential elections. And finally, van service to the farmer's market is being offered on a trial basis on July 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th, with a drop-off at 2 p.m. and a return at 2.30. Pre-registration is required so the driver can do better coordinate transportation requests. Um, the DDC is in the process of preparing for Bottle Hill Day, and I'll update you as uh, events start to come along with that. And finally, continue to look at the Madison Art and Cultural Alliance website. There are a number of programs coming up during the summer months. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Health and Public Assistance, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to report on MASA, which is like one of our most important uh, uh, portions of the, of the Board of Health that I feel does a lot of great work. Well, they, they've just gotten a new and improved website. It's a, it's a responsive design, which means that it will automatically detect which device is viewing it, such as uh, your mobile phone, an iPad, or a regular PC. Uh, this website will be a very effective tool for this important group to get the information out that is needed as an outreach to the community. Parents are going to be able to find the necessary information that they need um, to help them um, with their children's drug or alcohol problem. Parents will also be able to have the ability to correspond with MASA via direct email link to ask for additional information. So we're very pleased with that because it's an important, um, it's an important part of what Madison does as a service. Um, I listened to Doc's report, so this is like off the cuff here a little bit, but uh, with the water restrictions going into effect, you know, one of the things, the most important thing is to gather water for any rainfall we might have. 
So I'm just putting this out there because I do have three rain barrels left from our rain barrel workshop. If anybody like to buy them, it's a great opportunity to get it out there. Uh, Jim is laughing at me. I'm always hawking these rain barrels. But um, anyway, you put a rain barrel out, you'd be able to catch the water that God sends us and um, water your plants. So that's my little thing. But um, I also want to make um, an announcement about something that I'm very, very pleased about. Um, April um, 23rd, 2012, I asked the governing body to approve a request to fund $31,000 from the Jacob Henry Perkins Trust. And this is a trust that was left to the citizens of Madison by a Madison family. I believe, uh, having a hard time here. Um, anyway, the, what is it is used for is to help buy um, a badly needed senior citizen van. We've had, um, this poor van has really been taking uh, quite a beating in the last year or so. And with the promise that we would get the $31,000, that I would find funding from another grant source uh, for the other 35000 So with that funding in place, what we did is Mayor Conley and I approached Investors Bank and asked them for a matching grant of $35,000. So I'm pleased to announce that the CEO of Investors Bank approved our grant request, which will allow us to buy a brand new state-of-the-art senior citizen van, handicap accessible, and not use one penny of tax dollars. Um, I'd like to thank Kevin Cummings, who is the uh, president and CEO of Investors, and the leadership team at Investors Bank for their generosity and their continued commitment to Madison. They make a tremendous commitment to Madison with the, uh, the concerts that they support in Bottle Hill Day. So uh, we're very excited about this, and we're going to be looking at the specs for a new van and probably have one in 90 days. So. Uh, we're very thrilled that this has happened. So we've, we've gotten everything that we desired at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Communications and petitions. Uh, yes, Mayor. Mayor and Council received um, a special events permit request that was received June 16th from Megan Abinshone requesting use of the Hartley Dodge on August 3rd. Um, petitions were received today, June 9th, from uh, Mr. Blot of... Green Avenue with signatures of residents and business owners regarding the roadway reconstruction on Green Avenue. And an email also received today, July 9th, from Stephen McCain of 184 Green Avenue regarding, um, also regarding the roadway reconstruction of Green Avenue. Thank you. This is now the first of two invitations for discussion from the audience. This is the one that has limitations. You may discuss any of the agenda items and include, included in the agenda items, Green Avenue reconstruction, Morris County grant application to expand pedestrian walkway slash bikeway from Danforth to Elm Street, asset man management program for the borough utilities. We've added one, which is application for sustainable New Jersey grant from PSENG for community gardens. So you can comment on any of those or you can co also comment on any of the resolutions that are that have been listed for the consent agenda. Just as a little guideline on the comments, as you step forward, as usual, state your name, your address, and write the same on the sheet. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Um, please uh, be respectful of this time, and the audience, please uh, be respectful for any comments, whether you feel good about them or bad about them. Um, just as a, so everyone has an understanding, I know there's a lot of people, or people f probably from two neighborhoods, one on the Green Avenue reconstruction and the other on the bikeway. Since these are on the discussion, the council members will not be responding to any of your comments, but they certainly will be taking notes. So when we close the discussion time from the public, they will be able to uh, share their thoughts as part of the overall discussion. So with that, is there anyone wishing to be heard? Paul, you'll be next. Mm -hmm. 
My name is Joseph Balviershak. I live at 5 PJ Avenue. And I'm here to talk about the uh, planned extension of the uh, traction line. Now, I've been living on Beach Avenue now for about 18 years. This, was, this uh, extension was brought up about 14 years ago. Many of the residents in the Oak Hill section were opposed to it, and we're still opposed to it. And so I was surprised to see an email from the Morris County Parks Commission uh, looking for support for this extension. But I'll just be brief. I have about three reasons why I oppose the extension. First is environmental, because it seems to me that in order to build this, you're going to have to remove a lot of trees and brush along Beach Avenue, along uh, between Beach a the ba backyards of homes on Beach Avenue and the train tracks. This provides a lot of shade, buffer between the homes and the train tracks. Second is the usefulness of this extension. Uh, maybe it'll be, it has some use as an extension of the recreational path that is already existing, but uh, it is useless as a means for anybody in my neighborhood to access downtown Madison. For me to, for my home at Cedar and Beach, in order to use this and to access and to travel to downtown Madison, I would have to m travel 0.2 miles down Beach Avenue to Danforth in the opposite direction of town then back along the, the pathway. So I've walked four tenths of a mile just to be in front of my house. Within four tenths of a mile, I could have walked down Crestwood Drive and I could be halfway down Park Avenue to town. So, and it's because it seems that there's only one entry point at Danforth Road. Again, even as a recreational path, this train, this tra uh, traction line is gonna be right up against the tracks. And I walk the, tra uh, the extension, the tr traction line now, and when that outbound train walks, goes past you at a distance of 30, 35 yards, it gets your attention. I can't imagine even walking, you know, down the, this extension when you're only 10, 15 yards from the train. Plus the fact on the other side, you have people's backyards. And I don't want to be walking past the people's backyards as they're, you know, entertaining guests or, you know, playing with their kids. I, 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 I would not feel comfortable. So even as a recreational purpose, I don't see much use for it. And, you know, frankly, you can't use this past dusk. I mean, once it's dark, you can't walk down these. I don't walk down the traction line. I don't think anybody does. And lastly, the cost. You know, there's a significant grading issue after, you, after this traction line uh, extension reaches Crestwood Drive. There's a very steep grade, uh, grade there. That would have to be uh, regraded. You would have to remove all the trees. It would cost a lot of money. And basically, at the end of the day, I wouldn't use it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Vitale, you're making, making notes of some of the comments so you can address them when we call you up here a little bit? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Paul <laughs> uh, 25 Greenwood Avenue. Also on the Parks Committee, uh, I want to make some comments about the MRC. Uh, having been there to watch uh, several uh, sporting events, it's a gorgeous uh, location. <coughs> Community gardens are quite impressive. Work's been done within a very short period of time. But there's still much work that needs to be done, and I think it should be given some priority. Uh, I thought the bathrooms were done while well, there's still three porta johns there. The field house still needs interior work. Uh, it also needs some grading along the back and some landscaping and planting around the building itself. Uh, <clears throat> tree scaping around the field needs to be addressed. Uh, trees would help to control the soil retention and in time uh, shade and, and help uh, temperatures on, on, on the field. Especially needed is some shade area for spectators. If you're sitting in any of those stands, you really cook. Uh, trees are going in, uh, either shade tree or somebody should consider uh, trees of a larger caliper so that uh, it wouldn't take quite as long to get the shade cover that is needed. Uh, also, the, there is a water out to the field in a couple of spots. Uh, you should consider a watering system. If you're spending the money to put the trees in, you want them to be watered. Uh, and it would be a difficult area for our watering truck in town to get to going along the embankment. Uh, 
just a comment, the idea of a year-round uh, greenhouse is a great idea. I don't know that it's an immediate need. Uh, Memorial Park, Summerhill Park have maintenance problems and needs. Uh, many trees came down. The Parks Committee has left trees in the parks when they fall for many years. It's habitat for animals. Uh, but there's too many of them down. Also, the heavy rains in the fall ruined all the trails. Work needs to be done there. Uh, and uh, I, I would, uh, a question I have is, uh, how, do, how do we get access to open space money to get maintenance done that I think are needed in some priority? Oh, one other place, Cole Fountain on Cole Park. The fountain is, is deteriorating. Uh, Fifteen years ago it was renovated, but the base has gradually in time settled. Uh, it's not completely stable underneath and needs some work. And, and that's a, uh, was given to the borough of Madison some 90 years ago by the Cole family. Uh, it's at the corner of Fairview and Greenwood. Uh, just want to bring that to your attention, and I think uh, you're making the wise, wise decision right now to table Ordinance 14. Consider some other maintenance needs that we have at the MRC and in our parks. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Bill? I assume that you've all received our petition to reconstruct uh, Green Avenue from Woodland. Uh, Bill, Bill, if you can state your uh, name and address. I'm for sorry, the, it's Bill Kennard, 118 Green Avenue. Um, and I believe there's a number of people here tonight um, that um, endorse this petition, have signed this petition. So I'd like to ask anyone that's here in support of reconstructing Green if they could stand up for one second, please. Okay, thank you. I, I want to read the petition for those that have not seen it and just say a brief word about it, and there'll be other speakers that also want to address this. Um, this petition is addressed to the administration of the Borough of Madison, to the mayor, to the Borough Council, um, to the Borough Administrator, and to the town engineer. Uh, Green Avenue between Woodland Avenue and Shunpike Road has been in dire need of reconstruction for several years. As a result of misplaced priorities and lack of oversight, Green Avenue has become unacceptably dangerous for pedestrians, bicycles, and cars. We, the undersigned, petition you to promptly commit, without exception, to the reconstruction of this section of Green Avenue, including new curbing, replacement of all existing sidewalks, and any necessary improvements for drainage. All reconstruction work must be completed well before June 1, 2013. This petition reflects the determination of Green Avenue residents as well as the many town residents and merchants who use Green Avenue on a daily basis. We expect decisive action, not excuses or empty promises. We have 146 residents um, that have signed this petition. 33 live on Green Avenue, 15 are from Woodland, 46 uh, are from Garfield, Hillcrest, Highview Terrace, Clara Court, Amelia Court, Esty Court, Christina Court, and Midwood. Um, we don't really understand completely the mechanisms of how roads are prioritized and whether you have a five-year plan or an eight-year plan or whether it's done just by one year after another. But this, this road that we live on has had one pothole after another. There's a sinkhole in front of my house that's been patched twice. It's dangerous for bicyclists because it's right in the middle of a bike path. There are people that have been hurt down at the bottom of Green Avenue by Shunpike. Bicyclists have actually been hurt and emergency has been called. And we don't really know even how long it's been since that part of Green has been repaved. But at this point, it's not just the surface of the road, it's the underneath part of the road where there's, there's major problems in terms of drainage, the foundation. And uh, so what's been happening, and uh, anyone that, that, that's here that lives on green or uses green daily can attest that it's just been one pothole on top of another. And the patching doesn't work because as soon as you get the water freezing, the patch comes out. And so it's like an obstacle course. 
And it's very difficult for us to have to drive on this road and live on this road day in, day out. The ability so, to wrap up that's three So that's, that's all I want to say. I mean, there's others who want to say that too. But, uh, you know, it, as part of the community, uh, we would like um, to work with you and, and get a, a responsive a response that's going to commit to get this road repaved within the next, uh, before June or by June of 2013. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. You were, uh, tr try to keep the applause to a minute. Everyone got to stand up to show their support. Anyone else from this side so I can keep track of things? And then, then I'll come over this side. Good evening. My name is Dave Lloyd. I live at 24 Cedar Avenue here in Madison. On um, January 5, 2010, I looked out my kitchen window. It snowed, and uh, there was a survey team on my property early in the morning, like 8 a.m. So I had to dress. I mean, I went and was going to get dressed anyway. I went and talked to them. I certainly was cordial about it. I learned that they were from the Morris County Parks Commission. So I wrote an email the next day. But the important thing, I think, is that I was given no notice of uh, the survey team coming to my property. Tonight I'm here with no plans from the Parks Commission, not a letter from the Parks Commission, I guess there was a representative here, about what their plans are. Uh, obviously, I'm opposed to the extension. I agree with Bob, uh, Joe, my neighbor, that it's a waste of money. I would uh, follow Bill Kennard and ask how many people are here who oppose the extension of the bike. Please rise. Thank you. So um, I, I support Joe's comment. I know I have three minutes. I, don't, I didn't prepare because once again, I'm surprised I'm here. I'm surprised I'm here because it's all in a rumor I'm here. So I would ask the borough to take a little leadership with the Parks Commission, because I don't think they're interested in open covenants openly arrived at. I think they have managed this stealthily with secret agreements or secret plans. I would ask the borough to help the neighborhood with an OPRA request, requesting documents of the Parks Commission regarding any and all uh, information on this project. Now, beyond that, I will just mention in a word what this um, project may entail. Access, drainage, liability, noise, security, privacy, and I dare say, tax appeals. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Left, left side near the back. Still, I'm still in the. Uh, this, uh, yeah. Mr. My name is Sandeep Bhatt. I live on 117 Green Avenue. We all know by now that a series of egregious mistakes have led to Green Avenue not being fixed for the last four years. It is time to learn from these mistakes and ensure that they are never repeated. But to learn from mistakes, it is crucial to first acknowledge and to take responsibility for them. The buck stops with the council and the mayor. The governing body must hold itself accountable for these failures. Instead, in private conversations with council members, I have been offered excuses, self-justifications, and finger-pointing. If anyone is interested, a casual look at the public records will help identify those primarily responsible for this debacle. But that's not why we're here. This is not a witch hunt. We all want to move on and have Green Avenue fixed. The council must act to restore its credibility and to regain our trust in their workings. To this end, on behalf of all Green Avenue area residents, I ask four things of the Council. First, 
make an irrevocable commitment to fixing Green Avenue with or without state funding by the 1st of June next year. This includes sidewalks and curving and careful attention to sinkholes, drainage, and foundation problems underneath our avenue. Second, establish and publish now a list of milestones for every stage of the process, planning, budgeting, appropriations, contracting, and execution, and make these clearly transparent for residents to closely monitor. Third, involve area residents in every stage of the process. We want to ensure adequate oversight. Fourth, and most important, establish and maintain a channel for communications between the governing body and area residents. The complete lack of communication over the last year was deplorable. We will tolerate it no longer. Thank you. Chris, and we'll come back to you. Uh, my name is Chris Kellogg, 3 Walnut Street. I'm here to speak briefly uh, regarding the resolution that's been added to the agenda tonight regarding the um, the Sustainability Jersey Grant. Actually, Chris, you want to hold it? I, I invited you to address that as part of our discussion because you are uh, representing our our gardeners. So I'll, I'll call you up when we get to that discussion because this, oh, okay. because you are the ex all right. You, you're so, the expert. You're the expert behind okay. the grant application. Okay, so, so I'll wait for that opportunity. So I appreciate you coming in. And, but I uh, do have a comment to make regarding another right issue. Okay, that that go ahead. Um, so. I mean, we're all here in a, in a deliberative, democratic way, and we're all going to put our, our, our concerns and issues on the table. So I hear the concerns of the neighbors along the traction line extension very clearly, and I understand them. Um, as a member of the Open Space Committee, um, I also need to just put a little bit of a, of a support in for the idea of this extension of a recreational trail system, both for biking and hiking, that would enable the park system, which now links us all the way to Morristown, to be pulled in closer to the downtown of Madison. So it's, it, I hear the concerns of the neighbors and they're real. The, uh, the slightly larger issue, if we can find a balance there, is to put the whole community and then even the region within the context of this discussion so that we see how beneficial these long trail links and connections are for the whole county. Um, I can now bike, as I regularly do, up the traction line all the way to George Washington's headquarters, occasionally stop over at the headquarters to wander around the grounds there. Other times I take longer forays out into other uh, areas of the county to enjoy the beautiful county we live in. So I support the extension of the traction line. Thank you. Okay, we'll on this side, right on the aisle there, and we'll work our way back. Good evening. My name is Steve Crea. I live at 16 Beach Avenue. Been there about 12 years. Been a Madison resident for almost 31 years. And I'd like to say I'm opposed to the pedestrian walkway. Unlike most of the people who spoke so far, my backyard butts right up against the train line. I can see, you know, the, the train coming in. And back there, there's a beautiful and vibrant ecosystem that most people can't even see. There are wonderful birds, there are wonderful, there are bats, there are insects, there are all kinds of ground animals. And uh, the thought of that being somehow destroyed or at least, you know, uh, something done to it really bothers me. Also, there are some security concerns I have uh, and privacy concerns. And those involve, again, the fact that my yard and my neighbor's yards are all right up against, it's even closer than it is if you've ever been there, and I presume you haven't been in my yard. <laughs> um, but it's even closer to uh, the tracks than it is further up the line. And there's not a lot of clearance. And as a matter of fact, I have a gate in the back of my uh, stockade fence, and that would let me go right out onto the traction line. So believe me, it would be convenient for me to do that. 
but it just isn't, doesn't make sense. And finally, my last comment is the fact that uh, right now the traction line ends right at Danforth Road. From there, you can get right to Geralda Farms, walk around, bike around the beautiful area right there. It makes no sense to extend it for another roughly four tenths, half a mile down to Drew, um, you know, to provide convenience. It doesn't even come all the way into town. So, um, you know, I'd just like to reiterate that I'm uh, opposed to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Franco Chiogrosso from 12 Beach Avenue, and I live in that same neighborhood as several of the speakers who have come up so far. The neighborhood, the neighborhood one of the neighborhoods principally impacted by the proposed extension of the traction line, this additional 0.4 miles. I'd like to respond especially uh, to my neighbor who spoke favorably about the extension of the current traction line because of the value um, that it presents to us all as an extension of recreational facilities and as, and as an extension of the line that currently exists, the, the three and a half mile traction line that runs from Danforth all the way to the Ford Mansion in, um, um, in uh, Morristown. And the ideal that he puts forth is the extension of that line right into town. So some, someone could come all the way from Morristown right into the almost the heart of, of Madison. Um, that would be possibly a good idea if it were not for the very significant differences that exist along the current traction line at, and that territory that where the new extension would be set. The current traction line, as you all of you who know who have used it, uh, runs past Fairleigh Dickinson University and it's nicely blocked by a, by a cinder block and concrete wall. It then goes past the College of St. Elizabeth um, and is blocked by a, a beautiful wrought iron fence. Um, um, in both cases, the campuses are well removed, the actual buildings well removed from the traction line. The only place along the currently existing traction line where there are residential um, um, properties um, is the last 100 yards of the traction line before it ends near the Ford Mansion um, in Morristown. There were three houses there, and the houses are significantly back from the, uh, the actual traction line itself. There were three houses along a 3.6 or 3.7 mile stretch of path that otherwise doesn't invade anybody's privacy. Whereas in the proposed 0.4 mile extension, every foot of that extension runs through or at least behind people's properties. There are no open fields, there are no college campuses, um, it's all residential. So the invasion of privacy is enormous because it continues along every foot of the way. Furthermore, my friend, my neighbor David Lloyd spoke about his indignation at the way in which he was dealt with. He's got an even bigger gripe than he mentioned. His house right now is within 10 or 15 feet, it seems to me. I haven't measured it exactly, but that's my estimation. Within 10 or 15 feet of the railroad tracks. Wrap, to say, is that about right? Oh, I'll wrap it up, okay. Yep. To say nothing of how close his house will be um, to the proposed bike path. Trains going by can look into his windows. People going by on the proposed bike path extension could jump into his windows. Um, and I, I, I'm not really exaggerating that much, but I realize my time is up. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Um, I'm imploring the council to support us, the members of the community, who will be very negatively impacted by this change. Thank you. Thank you. Look. Hi, 
Hi there, my name is Wendy Tate. I live at 32 Crestwood Drive. Um, I really didn't prepare anything this evening because as some of my neighbors had said, we really didn't know what was going on. I recently applied for a variance with the town because I had a couple of feet that I needed to extend beyond some regulations. And I know that I had to send letters to uh, about 40 people within 200 feet of my home. And now there's something happening in my town that directly affects my property and I'm having to hear it by somebody walking past me on the street. So I definitely um, can say that I, that I feel somewhat slighted in that sense. Um, and I'm glad that somebody spoke before me and said the, the made mention of it's our need to think about the community as a whole, right? That there are a lot of people in the community, not just we individuals, that are going to be personally affected by this. But I implore that we think about what at the community is made up of. And it's of individuals like me. I'm a part of that community. So when we talk about people having the opportunity to bike in the afternoon and enjoy a few moments of pleasure, I say you're reducing my property value. You're making it more dangerous for children in, in my community. Um, I don't want to live there anymore if that happens. And so for me, I have to think about the community as it exists in my world and say that there has got to be a better solution for people who are looking for some recreational um, entertainment by creating something possibly on our street, a painted bike path. We have beautifully brand new paved streets. Thank you very much. Uh, for that. Let's take advantage of that. Let's create a sidewalk that people can utilize if there's students coming from other parts of that street. There is a far more economical way without destroying the people that pay taxes in this town um, and it can still provide the overall benefit to the community. So thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. Back there. Hello, good evening. Um, I just want to echo what uh, my name, name, name and address. Sorry, please. Veronica Trulin, Two Beach Avenue. And uh, just, I've been in Madison for six years. Before that, I was for five years in Chatham. And, uh, you know, when we were house hunting, the last thing we said, there will be no tracks behind our house. Well, guess what? With our budget, we needed, you know, we ended up with the tracks. But one of the things that we love about our house is our backyard, is the fact that we don't have anyone looking into our window from any place. So definitely, and it, this is definite, if there is an extension, I agree with you, we're moving out of Madison. That, that, it's no question about that. I have two young children. What we love about that house is them freely running around. I agree also, we have never been notified. And I think that at least a letter of notification that you're thinking about this would be very well appreciated by all of us. And frankly, I ride to town all the time with my three-year-old and my, my eight-year-old. And I don't need that back bike path that is going to drop me in where? In Elm Street? I don't, I don't even drive through there. What I do is either I go through parks. So if, what is the objective of this park, uh, you know, of this extraction line? If we want to have a town where people bike and go to town biking, then let's foster that. Let's create consistently good lanes for biking and let's tell people ride your bike into town and buy your basket and let's let's become like it is in Amsterdam and many parts of the world where people bike but it, this is not going to solve it if that is the, the objective this trail is not going to meet that objective so I please I beg you do not approve this grant do not submit this grant because it's really going to destroy the property the only thing that we many of us have it's going to undervalue. The, the market is already undervalued. And for us, strictly, it will make us move out of, out of our house. So please do not approve this. It's not going to benefit anything. It's better spend that money and build a park for kids to use rollerblading. Or again, as I said, let's do an effort for a community that bikes all the time. Let's do that. It ties very nicely with your wellness campaign. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Tom Larkins and I live at 110 Green Avenue. 
and um, Bill's next door neighbor, and I live across the street from Zandeep, and I uh, support them on this topic. And I just thought I'd try to raise in a short period of time a couple of points maybe that haven't been raised so far. Um, my wife and I have li lived in places that have had far more traffic than Madison, in Southern California. They've had far more extreme weather conditions than New Jersey. We've lived in Minnesota. And the, the road conditions in New Jersey are just the worst that I've seen. And so I was very appreciative when I saw neighboring repaving projects and reconstruction projects done and have seen the benefits of that. And the conditions of those roads at the time that they were reconstructed were magnificent compared to the shambles that Green Avenue is right now. And I just asked the council members to consider the fact that I think with each passing year, the cost of this project is going to go up significantly because it has reached that state of decay. I would also say that a knowing disregard of this and failure to act raises liability concerns for the town. And I would also say that if Green Avenue had been in the shape that it was in when we looked at our house 10 years ago, I'm not sure we would have chosen to move here. And I've been a walking advertisement for the town of Madison with my friends around the country. And they've come to visit from around the country and everyone has loved it. But it, it has just gotten to be a deplorable state. And I would just ask the council to please exhibit a how-to rather than a why-not mentality when it comes to solving this problem. Because this is a problem that needs to be solved and the council needs to exercise intelligent risk-taking and creative problem solving and figuring out a path forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Nancy Bengali, 4 Candlewood Drive, Madison, New Jersey, 07940. I've lived in my house 31 years. I drive Green Avenue every day. I did, but now I come up Garfield because that's paved now. And I take Kings Road, I mean uh, Woodland Road, and then I come down to Madison that way because I have a car that I'm afraid is going to be really ruined with that with our Green Avenue. Every single, you know, wait a minute. I can't believe how many angry people are here tonight. I can't believe how many people have gotten angry in this town, how many letters have been written to the Madison Eagle. I can't believe that you guys have been procrastinating all these years doing Green Avenue. Why, why are you making Madison residents angry? You promised me Four years ago, five years ago, or was it six years ago that Green Avenue was going to be done? You procrastinated. The money was there. The money was in our, in our <laughs> kitty, and it was there for Green Avenue, and you guys didn't do it. Why? Why didn't you not do Green Avenue? I know you can't answer. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll address all, as all but, the comments. But, you know, are... when are you going to do it? Yeah, well, we'll Whenever, be... I mean, communicate with us. What are you doing with the money? The money was there. Why haven't you done it? It's a sin because we all have new cars here in Madison, or the majority of us do, and we're ruining our tires, we're ruining our, our cars going up and down that road. I have to take Green Avenue to go to St. Vincent's on every Sunday and a couple times during the week if I go to Mass there. It's terrible. Mayor, you've got to do something about this road. I mean, it's people in Chatham, people in are all talking about our roads in Madison. Why is it that you guys aren't doing something about it? We have beautiful homes here. We have a town that's selling. Our houses are selling like hotcakes in this town. But who's going to want to buy a house when they see the roads that we have? It's not only Green Avenue. There's a lot of roads here in Madison that are neglected. Please don't make the residents angry. We pay our taxes and we pay them on time. What happens to us if we don't pay our taxes? Do we get booted out or, you know, come on, do something and stop procrastinating. Be nice to the residents. We love you guys. We voted you in. Come on, do your job. Thank you, Nancy. Holzman, I live at 5 Estee Court in Madison. 
I've been a Madison resident since 1982 when I originally moved into the Madison Common. About a year or two after I moved there, the North Street pump station went down, down and out. Now there's an item on this agenda that says asset management program. I'd like to say that historically the Madison Borough Council has been negligent in their duties and not having had an asset management program for all of its assets, not just the utilities, the electric utility, the pump stations. Every major corporation and every business manages its assets by putting money aside in reserve. According to New Jersey state laws, condominiums and homeowners associations must have capital reserves to take care of their assets. Why did not the borough do likewise as state law and maintain its assets by putting money aside instead of robbing the budget from Green Avenue to take care of the pump station now. I would say that we should not just have a petition to redo Green Avenue. We need a, a petition to go before the, our Board of Assessment and have all of us who are affected by the lack of services on Green Avenue project reduce our taxes for lack of borough services where we live. It's been done in other communities. I know where the taxes were reduced because the community did not provide the services they are required to provide. Madison is not providing its services to us. We want our taxes reduced on Green Avenue because you're not doing your job and postponing this project. <coughs> The state is running out of money. Don't look to the state for money. You'll never get it. In the meantime, labor costs go up. Gasoline prices, petrol, petroleum product prices go up. Asphalt prices go up. What do you think the next bid's going to be? It's not going to be lower. You're not going to be within what you thought you had budgeted for. It's only going to exceed it. And then you're going to say, let's rob everybody else. We'll get the money from somebody else. And again, let's get our taxes reduced because we're not getting any services from the Borough Council historically in the past 30 years. Thank you. Good evening, Joe Hannibal, 17 Beach Avenue in Madison. Been there for 40 years. I concur with Joe, Frank, and David Lloyd and all the other neighbors against this particular bike path extension. I'm appalled in a way, the county, why it didn't inform everybody. What is it? How much is this grant? You know, there's something wrong here. It seems like something's, it's just not right. Ride the path, the existing one, as Frank said, and you'll be amazed. I ride it almost every day. Don't do it. Pass. Extend up in Marstown. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? I don't no, no, I'm sorry. Well, you get one. Otherwise, we could be here all night long. But <laughs> okay, I close this part of the meeting. We move on to agenda discussions. Our opening one is. Uh, Green Avenue Reconstruction. Oh, I'm sorry. He's, not, he's, he's just signing it. Yeah. Thank you, Dave, for taking care of that. Um, Bob Vogel is here. So you can address some of the Green Avenue Reconstruction. Uh, this is the agenda rec came to add, have, this, have this discussion in response from uh, the neighborhood. 
Jeannie, um, Rob, and it's not all in front of me, but John, John thank you. You have the three of us. Um, so, Bob, you can, if you can cover a little of the process, and I, I, I do want to um, thank the uh, people that spoke on both things, uh, whether you agree with it or not, it's always passion, and, and people show passion because they love their town, and so I appreciate you coming up here. And I also want to point out to the, um, despite the frustration of the Green Avenue residents, the understanding of the person that authored the petition of not putting down a date such as August 31st, 2012, but being very clear, it's time to proceed, but reasonable, you know, June 1st, 2013. So Bob, if you can address the, what needs to be done, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, state aid process and can, can, how can we meet this June 1st, 2013 sure. target? Well, over the past several weeks, we knew this day was coming. And so uh, now that we've got the full uh, uh, weight of our, of our uh, residents uh, coming in at one council meeting and speaking about Green Avenue, uh, I would say we're, we've talked a lot about it behind the scenes before tonight. So that's a good thing. And I think we've managed to, uh, to work out a, a plan that makes sense moving forward, no excuses, um, to number one, uh, have both a capital project review committee meeting and an informal public hearing as we did last year on the project. Make sure that the plans and specifications and cost estimates are all 100%. Is my time up? <laughs> you keep on going, sorry about that. Uh, make sure the plans, specifications and cost estimates have been threshed out publicly, uh, allow the public to review them and, uh, and, uh, and make sure that it's 100% consistent with their expectations. Um, and uh, then uh, simultaneous to that, I think over the next couple of months, we're gonna have the opportunity to apply for state funds. I'm not suggesting Green Avenue be contingent upon state funds, but it is an exceptional time we're working through right now, and I, you know, budgetary constraints are there. Um, and so uh, we have to deal with that. But uh, by the same token, you know, I, I think it would, we'd be remiss not to apply for state funding again and, tr and try to get some matching funds from the state to get this project done. Uh, so that can also be done over the next 60 days. Um, and then uh, we get into a, a period this fall where, again, we've, we've put extra pressure on DPW to do patch repairs and things like that out, out, in, the, uh, out in the field and try to take some pressure off the, uh, the age of the road. Um, and they have done that. And we have to continually get after that as the winter approaches. Um, but likely we're not gonna hear back from the state on state funding until January, February of, of 2013. Uh, at which point, again, we'll have a lot of time uh, to, to, to have those plans and specifications and cost estimates open and ready for public review. Uh, I mean, as soon as we heard back from the state, from my perspective, we could issue a set of bid docs um, four months between October and January uh, where there's not much we can do except, except uh, wait for that state response. And so there's gonna be a lot of time for public involvement in the process. Um, and I believe that, uh, that uh, we will, uh, again, have a budget, um, hopefully grant funding, and uh, a project that is awardable uh, in the springtime. And we don't need to go over old ground. I mean, there's lots of reasons, good reasons, why uh, the project was not able to be awarded in, in February. Um, but we're not going there. Uh, and uh, so in terms of uh, having a no excuses plan moving forward, that's what I, was, what I would suggest. I've talked with Rob about scheduling the 26th for a, uh, for a capital project review committee. I think as soon as that committee meeting is done, we can, last year we did the informal public hearing in September, but any time between the end of July and the end of September, I think is reasonable for an informal public hearing. I would suggest Green Avenue be the first on the list as far as public comment is concerned, because I know at the last capital project review committee meeting, they were last on the list. and. It was literally 9.30 at night before anyone from Green Avenue had a chance to stand up and say anything about the project or review the documents. And so, so I suggest that we put them first on the list this time at the informal hearing. And, 
then take all those public comments, crunch through the plans and specs one more time, and uh, hopefully have an awardable project as soon as the state gets back to us. Okay, a couple of quick questions and open up to the uh, council. Um, two main things that derailed it uh, last year. One was the workload that it, it didn't get out there until um, really until this year. Uh, so as you project your the engineering department workload and our resources, this can meet, meet all these targets because obviously we've heard that that there is no excuses if we miss it. So you, you've, that that will definitely happen. So one of the problems that we had last year is we had to change horses with design consultants uh, midstream. We don't have that problem this year. That problem is gone. And so uh, if you continue with uh, with in-house services to do that project. I'm perfectly comfortable with the plans that we produced, and uh, while budgetarily we ran short because of the addition of complete sidewalks instead of selective replacement of sidewalks, uh, again, complete curbing instead of selective replacement of curb, uh, curbing, those are cost items, and it reflected in the bids in, in January. Not the only reasons it did, but there were significant contributors, and so, um, yeah, I think uh, so, we'll have all that information uh, open and available for public review long in advance of the bid and award. And uh, you addressed some of the things, which is the um, making sure we really do our homework so we don't uh, underestimate the project again, so that we have the numbers really checked. The last question I have is with the process with state aid, um, I, th I think, you know, we're gonna, we've got to go through with this project. Do, do we have to wait if if we're gonna do it in 2013, as soon as construction season starts, do we actually have to wait for the answer from the state to put the bids out on the street, or can we jumpstart the process so we have bids in hand and then we have the funding from the state to help us through the process? Yeah, unfortunately, the municipal aid process is such that we, they need to give us authorization to bid. Okay. Uh, so, and they won't do that without a commitment uh, okay. on funding. And I would, again, suspect, suspect that well in advance of the time we'd actually bid it anyway, being so, March or April. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we should be able to turn that over very quickly. I mean, if, if you'd like, I could certainly advance a copy down to the DOT. So if you have any questions, guys, tell us now, because we want to bid this immediately upon your authorization. Um, that's, that's a good option. I, I think yeah, that so would we probably be track that. We can that. that Far better to send the plans down there. We could always send the whole neighborhood and they'll yeah, still also sense. hear <laughs> the uh, importance. No arguments. Okay. Jeannie and then Don and um, then Rob. I believe all the neighbors recall that last year we had that informal meeting. This meeting that you're referring to that we're about to have in a few months, how would this meeting be different from last year's meeting? Considering that we do have the plans finished, um, and based on our conversation this afternoon, um, the only minor adjustments that we can potentially do, which require very little time, is we might be able to tighten the technical spec a little bit mm -hmm. to make sure that um, the bits will come back mm -hmm. as close to what we expect as possible. Um, so exactly what are you presenting to the neighbor um, in this meeting, which will be different from last year's meeting? Uh, last year we had the design consultant's plans, which again had partial replacement of some of the components that we're talking about and that were actually bid. Um, this year we'll have the complete set of plans, specification, and cost estimates sitting there on the table for people to review. And it'll be a very complete presentation. It won't just be selective plans uh, to review. It'll be the complete set of bid documents that are ready to go. Okay. Um, another question will be, based on the timelines that you just described to us, what will be a reasonable expectation of us going out to bid? And then the, the, the second part of the question is, when the residents can expect the reconstruction to be complete. Well, if you're talking about working with state funding and, right. and, and hoping to get the municipal aid project, if we get our answers from the state in February, it's perfectly reasonable to expect uh, that at the end of April, <coughs> we have a contractor ready to go. 
assuming that next year's council will approve the reconstruction of Green Avenue. Correct. At a slightly higher budget than it was last year. Right. So looking at what we have in our capital improvement fund, after this year, we have no money left mm -hmm. in the pot. The only money that we have to be able to fund this project is by using the fund balance. Right? And now, if I had a conversation with Mr. Caliphat this afternoon, as of January 1st this year, we have approximately $2.2 million in fund balance. In February, since we rescinded the ordinance to do green reconstruction, we put back 450000 into the pot. But this year's budget, we used 772000 as a revenue to balance this year's budget. So what we have left it's 1 million, 1.9 million approximately for projects such as Green Avenue. Um, so from these numbers, certainly I think we all understand that this is a real challenge and we have to hope that next year's council will agree that this is going to be a continued priority next year. Um, so I guess I'm asking my fellow council people to see if there's any way, and also ask the administrator, the mayor, and, and the engineer, that is there any way that we can expedite this project this year and make the decision this year um, to fund the project and get the project started without waiting for next April to make the decision. I don't, don't know the budgetary answer. Well, well, the budgetary. Yeah, not the budgetary answer, but the, if you were given a go-ahead as far as timing of final documents, getting it out on the street, getting bids back, getting underway, just from the engineering point of view, can it be, can you're it be late, done? You're late in the season this year. It'll be November, and that's not a good time to start a construction project. Okay. Uh, so from an engineering perspective, even though if we appropriate money now, there's no way that we can get it done this year. Uh, I, uh, I just, <laughs> just, 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 I no. Thought, yeah. If you get another snowfall, though, you're, you're going to have a whole. You, you, you can have a, a Woodland Road uh, scenario. I, I think it's, yeah. it's riskier than taking the extra time and, and getting an answer from the state and bidding it in the spring. And, and, and that's and, my answer. And the funding for a state grant, what percent typically, what, as we go to the state, what would we be asking for? <clears throat> Well, uh, you're, you're, you're off the, you know, we don't have a, a final number in the project, but what do you, you know, where do you see dollar-wise the project is heading right now, dollar-wise, and how much would come, do you believe would come from the state? Well, if we, if we, if we budgeted 550 for the project the next year, and we got 200 to 250 from the state, you have a very good match. Okay. We... So the total cost is 800. <clears throat> no, no, no. No, you get 250 from the state so to, to, offset the total. to offset the 550 total, correct. Sure, that's the right number. Uh, no, it's the the bid the bid yeah. quantities from from uh, the apparent low bidder, I believe, were five fifty in February. And so can I, can I, ask I think those numbers should hold. No. But okay. It's yep. this okay. 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 Uh, yep. All right. Okay, here's what I'm proposing, right? Yep. So Friday, hey, we did this, I'm not spending a lot of time. We did the MRC, and a year or less, didn't we? Mm -hmm. How did we do it? What did we do? We had a weekly meeting every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. We pushed the envelope. We made everyone accountable, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I work with your department. I have a new business story. We're going to do what we can and what we can control. We are going to start meeting. And we'll see if it's done in two weeks, three weeks. We're going to start meeting in three weeks. That'd be Tuesday morning at 8. 
avant un infiniment design, avant un first envelope, avant un survey. And I'm fine with that. Uh, if, if, we meet, if we want to meet every couple of weeks and make it our highest priority. Oh, no. It's going to be every week. I <laughs> want... No, I would do the darn thing the same way. Yeah. If I ever perform that government, it doesn't have to be slow. It doesn't. We did the MRC, was that done quickly? Was it done right? I think we can say yes. So my point is to slow what you had for on this one three weeks. At least we will have another thing. Okay. Uh, Rob and then Bob. A couple things. Um, I, I can't speak for what previous councils did or didn't do. When I got on council last year, I asked the mayor to restart this construction review committee. And what we did was we asked the department heads to, to, to uh, come together as, uh, as, a, as a group. And we wanted to list uh, the, uh, in a critical nature, um, you know, the, the, the challenges that faced our infrastructure. And starting last summer, certainly last fall, I began warning residents that as bad as the roads were, and believe me, the condition of the roads is one of the things that made me run for office, what was underneath them was significantly worse. Absolutely. Uh, it's one thing to talk about flat tires. You know, my wife has blown out a flat tire on Green Avenue. I, you know, I, I live right around the corner. I know how bad it is. But if the pump stations fail, we have 30, 40% of the town under sewage. I promise you, no one's moving here and our property values are worth a lot less and that costs a lot more to fix on the roads. So <clears throat> what our goal will be later in, the, uh, I cannot commit to doing any project until we get input again from the department heads as to what the state is of our critical infrastructure. So we've kind of tackled North Street, which probably should have been fixed 20 years ago, but it wasn't. For whatever reason, I don't know, but we're fixing it now. We're replacing 100-year-old force mains on Park Avenue, okay? That's just scratching the surface. Um, I think it's reckless to try to push ahead and take money from fund balance this year, knowing that we have $3.6 million in repairs that we must make to the Madison-Chatham joint meeting. Where's that money going to come from, okay? I want to fix Green Avenue more than anybody because I use it every day. Okay, we, I go back that way all the time. You know, we're on it. But we have to do this in a measured way. Uh, so, you know, and, and Bob, I'm skeptical of the $550,000 bid. I saw the plans last year. I can just imagine what we're, I don't think we're going to get value for money at 550 and I really think we need to review those specs uh, and the contracts. I, I don't see that. And again, I, I don't know much about construction, but you know, based on looking at it last year, the numbers I heard were closer to 650 or 700. And I think we have to have a realistic expectation of what we're going into, but we have to think of the town as a whole, okay? And if we're gonna lose sewers, right? Or, you know, we, we, there's just so much money to go around, unless the town is willing to pay significantly more in a one-off tax bill next year because we can do that. I checked with the CFO. We can pass through taxes on one year for, for capital. Okay, but this is something that we're going to need to have an extensive dialogue on and I don't think it makes any sense to push forward and try to fund something this year knowing the issues that we face next year. I, I'm sorry. And, and Rob, just to clarify your comment, as you talk about a measured process, you still, Jan, June 1st of next year, you could probably meet in your measured process. If, as it, you work if in fact, day. if in fact, you know, we can, if in fact we, 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 we find the money and we decide as, as, as a community, yep. we can do that. But in terms of, you know, trying to yes. get it done this year, you know, I think we need to meet with the, we, we need to go and review what's going on at, at the joint meeting, really double check uh, what they're telling us, if it's true or not. Do we really need to replace 3.6 million? We have to negotiate strongly and effectively as to what our fair share of cost is for that. We have to figure out how we're going to pay for that. Because that has to be, if we're going to bond for it, we have to bond for it in October to get the work done next year. Because, you know, according to, according to them, 
you know, of the of the stuff that they want us to fix, eighty percent of it could fail within the next two years. You know, and it all has to be looked at. And and again, uh, you know, I still must caution the residents that as bad as the roads are, when I did the tour, you know, with Bob and 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 the you know and the other members of the committee, what's underneath them is worse. Sorry for preaching. Yeah, no, thank you. Bob and then Carmelo. Yeah, yeah. I agree with a lot of what Rob said there. Um, I have an idea which may help, and I'm going to look to Ray and Jim to maybe give me some guidance on this. A while back, I was able to negotiate about $450,000 coming back from FEMA. And jokingly, I said, let's put that money in the kitty, since that was to repair infrastructure, take that money, put it aside to repair future infrastructure projects. I know that the estimates for Green Avenue are probably way off, and 450000 wouldn't pay for it. But it could go a long way for that or be used for other infrastructure projects, such as the sewer projects that have to be done, and that would free up other money for Green Avenue. I don't know the proper accounting treatment. It's a suggestion. Um, the money, I've started to get the notifications from the state police that the money's coming available and we'll start to get that money in over the next couple of months. So I offer that as a suggestion. Carmelo? Um, I, I think, you know, some of the concerns that I have is, is exactly what Rob was talking about. Um, the $550,000 from last year is not gonna be the $550,000 in 2013. I'm, I'm almost convinced of that. Uh, so I think, with Don's suggestion that um, you meet on a regular basis, you set up a plan, you bring the people together so they understand the plan, but the most important issue is to make sure of the cost of this project. Be, we have to have a better understanding of not only where the money's gonna come from, but what it's gonna cost. And I, I just don't feel that those numbers are absolutely correct. And um, I, I think that most of us, you know, sitting here um, are in absolute agreement that something needs to be done. Um, it, it was an unfortunate situation that it got pulled last year, and we're all willing to move forward on this now, but I think we need the, uh, more information. I personally would like to know if the, if the complete plan, that $550,000, included the extra sidewalks and the curbing yeah. and whatever that uh, was asked for, you know, after that, that one plan was submitted. So I, I think that's really important. We just need to gather as much real good information as we possibly can. And, um, and, and I think this, this council, this mayor and council can make a, a very good decision regarding that. Okay. Other comments or? Yeah, I, I, that was my whole point. I'm not so sure we can get it done this year, but I sure as hell don't want to be in October so think about it. I want to have a plan. I want to know what we're doing, how much, and does it beat the expectation level of these people? Right? So that's why, that's why I'm saying Let's do it now. Let's do exactly the same thing we did for the last year and a half. I know you hate it, but I love no, it. No, it's, it's, it's fine. It's a, if it's, we want to get it done, that's how you want to get it done. I've been here 10 years, and I've, I've never been through a season where it's been more difficult to balance priorities. And so, yeah. Um, yeah that's I, where we are. I think the key is going to be robbing your me, and actually, you're totally correct. The problem underneath is worse than above. So that has to be done. But if we don't move to Free Avenue, I mean, what we have to do? Have this building fall on our heads? Jeannie? Yeah, um, just want to address something that was mentioned by a resident, I believe it was by Mr. Bott, about communications. I think several others talked about communications as well. Um, I, I think all of us believe that when, in terms of communications, we always need to try to go above and beyond when we communicate with residents. Um, I, I think some of you might have known this, that um, 
in the case of uh, Green Avenue reconstruction, even though our administration's past practice was if, if we have a go for a project, we'll notify residents that, um, that um, construction will soon begin. But in the case that if we change our plans, it, it wasn't our past practice to tell the residents that we have changed our plans. Um, so I believe it's important that, um, that to inform the residents that we change our plans. I think we all agree with that. And I would, um, moving ahead, I would ask Mr. Cody, along with all his department heads, that to make sure that if we said we're going to do something and, and we make some changes or we decided not to do it, we will go back to the residents and make sure that they understand we're not doing it and the reasons as to why we're not doing it or the reasons for the delay. And perhaps at the same time, communicate to them that exactly what we're going to do in the future to move something forward. Um, also want to let everyone know that um, Mr. Cody, Mr. Burnett, and I met with our um, technology director. Um, um, Mr. Sanderson is um, in the process of making our website more user friendly um, in terms of rearranging things in the website. Um, so it will be easier to find certain information on the website. And I'm pretty sure that when um, Jim is done with that project that he'll come back to the council and present it to the public. Um, it's um, uh, hopefully um, the website will, will be more user friendly and more um, residents will be able to get information in a, in a, at the comfort of your home just by logging on um, to the computer and use Rosenet. And also, I think, um, as far as the departments are concerned, once we have that reconfigured, um, we will encourage department heads to post more information on the website um, for the residents um, to see. Um, perhaps these are the things, or if the residents have other ideas as to how we can better communicate, um, please just come tell us, and we'll, we'll see what we can do to improve communication in the future. Rob? Just um, for my, uh, just to make things, a few things clear. So the grant applications are due in August, or is that, is that when you can first put them in, right? The state hasn't issued the yeah, letters yet. state hasn't, but typically it's? Typically uh, the letters are out already, mm -hmm. and we have submitted the applications by the end of July. I Last see. year it was the end of August, begin, beginning of November, and at their current rate of getting these letters out, I suspect the state's not going to have them in our hands before the end of July. Okay, so, two but more weeks. either way, um, I, there, I would I would just like I don't know what the proper uh, parliamentary procedure is for this, but I would at least like to show consensus among the governing body that we instruct the borough engineer and the borough administrator to make Green Avenue our priority for for for, for uh, matching municipal funds, aid. Right. municipal aid right. for the streets. Absolutely. So I mean, I, I certainly think we can we can at least do that, so that they know once they can do it, we can immediately um, um, uh, uh, proceed. And I'd also like to have the plans, uh, Bob, if you don't mind, for the reconstruction at the meeting on the 27th, yeah. uh, so we can we review those to make sure that the numbers look look we'll good. We'll spend a lot of time on it. Thank I, you. I think what we can do with the state grant is a two-step because once the application is done, I think we would do a resolution as part of that grant application. What we, what we can do right now, if you want to make a motion, is that Green Avenue will be the road to apply for state aid and all efforts will be put in that direction. So move, Mayor. We'll have a second. Second that. Discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. Okay. And I think the other steps, I think, have been very clear. There's We've got to stay right on target with this. We've got a plenty of people besides the six at the table here and the staff. We've got a whole room and a whole town. Keep an eye on this. We've got to not miss any targets and we need to keep the communication open. We've got some key emails and some neighborhood leaders that we can communicate and they will put the word on out to the rest of the neighborhood. Janie and then Don, then we'll try to move on to the next uh, agenda item. Yeah, I would also like to confirm that um, that by September, we should have the plans 
uh, improve, uh, improve plans available and perhaps um, to have that informal meeting with the residents prior to that time? Would that be a reasonable I, I think schedule? The, the improved plans are what the residents are probably looking for, yeah. fully threshed out, and I think by September that's perfectly reasonable. Okay. Let's, let's put, to, put together the full, yeah. full calendar that's yeah. within our control. We, we, we had to take some guess as far as the state application process, but with our knowledge of today, put some dates in there, let, let's get that posted and distributed. Yeah. The one thing right. that I remember, Mayor, that worked out well with Pine Beach, Rose, and Cedar last year was there was a community captain. Yep. Uh, who got <clears throat> emails out to all the residents, and uh, it'd be nice to allocate that since we have so many people here yeah. Uh, tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, for for you know, the first thing, the wife said, April 15th, reason why, two people want to come to the first meeting right down the hall, April 15th, don't bring coffee, we're not going to be fooling around. Be at least an hour, and we to do it every week. Is that fair? I'm sorry. Is it fair? It's all open. If you don't come, it's your fault, not mine. I'll be here every week. Okay. Rock, right, let's do it. All right. Moving on to the uh, Morris County grant application. Mr. Vitali, thank you very much for your patience. A um, couple things I want to just make sure we're, uh, that you'll cover in your presentation. Actually, we'll, uh, we'll let Green Avenue clear out. <laughs> That's, uh, yep. And as you uh, clear out, if you're going to have conversations out in the hallway, remember it echoes through, so move it on downstairs. And we appreciate you coming out tonight. Okay. All right, but, 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 oh wait, let me get to, but, Jerome Holtzman, please, thank you. All right, the, the, a couple things, um, I, I, you have a presentation, but uh, reinforce that should be covered. Concern about the, the, the existing buffer between properties and the tracks that, that may be lost. Security, what, what will happen between the trail and property owners? Any ecological impact that it may have uh, related to the security was, uh, you know, what fencing or barricades might be between property lines and um, the bicycle path. The communication, you heard the comments that the communication was very poor. It's up to date, how, if it, things go forward, how we will work on that. Um, from your experience as far as bike paths or similar projects in backyards, what the effect might have been on property values, um, and this may be covered in your plan, is what, what is the overall bike policy plan for the county? And also I want to have one clarification. You received a letter from the Open Space Advisory Committee signed by Melissa Hanahan, the chair, uh, through a misunderstanding as far as roles of committee that letter truly should have been sent to the council as their recommendation, and then the council would have acted on it. So please take that not as an official document of the borough of Madison, but as a well-intended but uh, not, not properly procedure followed. And now, Arthur, please go ahead. Certainly. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members of the council, Administrator Cody, Clerk Osborne, and Attorney Jacoby. About six or seven weeks ago, I was asked to get involved with this project and to get involved with it by submitting an application for a Transportation Enhancement Fund grant from the New Jersey Department of Transportation. So, here I am. May I ask you a question? I don't hear about 
Did you say you were contacted by uh, whom? Uh, uh, Don, Don oh. no, let, let's get to the process and then we'll take questions, please. I, I do understand the, the question there. Uh, I was first asked to get in pro involved with the project about six or seven weeks ago, so I really don't know what happened right. before. Here I am. Uh, d d Don, this, this is a county project, so please, yeah. please let him go through the process and then we'll take questions. Okay. Uh, what I've handed out is a, a, a booklet that, uh, if you can take a look at the second page, shows the existing paved traction line trail, and it shows a general location for the traction line trail project location. And on the third page, it gives a very brief description of what the project would be all about. We do not have plans on it, so we cannot address details. In fact, we need the funding in order to be able to go ahead and develop the plans. The grant application would be for funding for the design and the construction, as well as construction phase supervision of the project. For the application, we needed to put together a very general description, and that's what's on the third page. The trail is approximately six tenths of a, of a mile long, and it would be very similar to the trail that's in existence now. It would be 10 feet wide, and uh, we're proposing a chain link fence between the trail and the railroad. Now, some stretches of the existing line trail uh, have fencing on both sides, and some have just fencing between the trail and the railroad. Certainly, for safety's sake, one is needed between the trail and the railroad. Uh, in uh, a discussion with Mr. Vogel, Mr. Vogel suggested that thought be given to putting a fence on both sides, that is, between the neighbor's property and the beginning of the Morris County Park Commission property. Uh, if that should turn out to be a desire of the Borough Council, we can do that. Basically, the reason that uh, I'm here tonight is to uh, address whatever questions I can. Again, we need this grant in order to be able to address the detailed engineering. But uh, with respect to the grant application, I'll be happy to address what I can. Uh, we have talked about, we've heard from several of the people tonight about the problems involved in, in building the project. Uh, certainly, it's not going to be one of the easiest projects to build. It's not going to be easy as the first sections, the sections that are in existence now where there was essentially a roadway, a traveled way uh, there before. No question about it. Trees are going to have to come down. There's no question that uh, brush and shrubbery is going to have to come down. There will be grading problems. There will be design problems. And someone mentioned, I believe the very first speaker, that it's going to be expensive. Yes. Uh, in order to do this uh, approximately six-tenths of a mile uh, trail, the cost estimate that would be in the grant application, which would include the engineering construction and the construction uh, observation phase, is $545,000. Uh, with respect to uh, any, any of the concerns that uh, the council might have, we, we sure would like to know uh, what they might be. The uh, matter before us with respect to the grant is that the grant application uh, asks if the host community, Madison, is supportive of the project or not. There are two little boxes to check off, yes or no. And in the application, if you check off the box yes, they also want to see a resolution to go with it. So that's why our uh, executive director had uh, submitted uh, to Mr. Cody uh, a request that Madison, the Borough Council, uh, consider adopting such a resolution. Uh, we would like to know whether uh, the council uh, would support such a resolution. That's really why uh, I'm here tonight. Uh, with respect to all of the other questions, uh, such as drainage, yeah, there will be drainage matters that must be addressed. And I suspect they're not going to be as easy as 
in the first couple sections of the traction line. Uh, for one thing, drainage requirements and reviews on the part of the state have increased significantly since those existing parts were built. Uh, if there are any special considerations that Mad Madison would like, we would like to know that. Uh, but we really won't be in, in any position to propose details until we get a, a, a design done, which, as I've said, is part of this uh, application. Now, that's a, a very general description because the whole project is at a general point. So, are there okay. any questions so, so far? So, it's just for uh, confirmation of this whole process again for um, the council and any audience. Basically, what you're looking for is a, an endorsement from, from the council on this project that would be part of the grant application, or you may end up, depending on what the council says, with checking off the no box. But th this, this body does not have the ability to tell the project go ahead or to stop it. It is a, a county parks and through the freeholders project. So you're getting that input. Some of the questions that was brought out there, you were able to address in a broad uh, level, but it, without engineering, which is part of the grant, we can't really talk about what trees would come down, how drainage would be addressed, and, and, and all that. that. Okay, That is correct. Correct. <clears throat> So I, and I, I see council, is, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do a reverse this time around, so, uh, and then come around, so I'll, Carmel, did you? Did you? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, I, I think one of our biggest concerns here is that uh, there was no knowledge that this was happening, okay? And that's a big concern for those of us who sit on this council. Um, you know, we like to listen to what, um, what our residents are talking about. And uh, that's a major concern. So, I mean, basically what you're asking us to, uh, to say yes to is something that we don't actually, no, you can't, sorry. Um, we don't even know but, how hold, it's gonna hold, be Yeah, Bob, Bob, if you could tell them to heed my advice and move downstairs. <laughs> Take their conversations. Okay, yeah. sorry, Carmela. That's all right. Had the baby before you. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so that's that's one of our biggest concerns. I mean, you heard the people say that there were surveyors on their property without them knowing it. That there is going to be absolutely no privacy and whatever. And I, I think, you know, um, our, our intention is to walk it all tomorrow. So if you see Bob Landrigan and I walking in your backyard, you know <laughs> that, it, that we're, we're just, we're just going to walk down to it. I don't understand what the purpose of it is at, the, at this stage, you know, basically. I mean, that, that's like a fundamental, simple right. question is, you know, I understand, you know, to continue the bike paths and whatever. But that, that stretch of land is such a difficult project that I, I just don't understand why it has to be done. You're absolutely right, yeah. uh, Councilwoman Vitale. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, yes, you are. We say Vitale. We Still say Vitale. Saying, we say Vitale. <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right. It will be a difficult project to build. Uh, the purpose in the project is quite simply to extend the pedestrian way from Danforth Road uh, to Elm Street, uh, along with the bikeway, of course. That really is the purpose, in, uh, succinctly. Yeah. And, uh, that we're, if the borough council should decide negatively, you know, just, just please do let us know. Uh, if you should decide positively, also please let us know. Bob? Bob? Uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. First, I have an observation. Uh, the pictures in here depict the existing bike path. What it doesn't show is the route of the proposed bike path, which will cut right through uh, neighbors' backyards. So I question the validity or the uh, value of the presentation. That said, um, it's extending it for six-tenths of a mile but for real, no economic purpose. It's going to Elm Street, which is not in the center of downtown Madison. Um, 
so I don't see any economic viability to it. In regards to security, I'm an auxiliary cop. I, my daughter is a Morris Township police officer. And what I will tell you is this, a path like this going right through the backyards of residents is crime waiting to happen. You made a very valid point before in saying that the existing path goes behind a university with a stone wall that protects it, past other properties that are set way back. This is going to go right through somebody's backyard. Now my question to you is this, for a half a million dollars, why can't you improve other bike paths around the county and not destroy trees and brush that are back there right now? The, uh, the Park Commission has selected this uh, as a priority, and uh, certainly there are other uh, bikeways and trails uh, that could be done. But right now, this has been selected as a priority, and sure, we can take a look. The Commission can take a look at that. But why is this a priority if there's no true economic benefit to it? Certainly not to the town of Madison. Yeah, I, I think Mr. Vital is in a difficult position being brought on board recently without being able to you know, talk about the full plan for the county. It would be far better to understand it in, in that perspective and the cost of the extension years ago from uh, the bike trails of Wanaka to the Green Village Post Office and things like that. We, we don't have that perspective and so certainly We'll go around here, we'll have a, it's a listed resolution and you'll, you'll, you'll have the yay or nay tonight most likely, but certain feedback will be, this was not enough information for anybody to make a uh, good decision. With. Yes, uh, frankly I wish I had more information too, yeah. but we really need that grant in order yeah. to come up with the details of the plan. Yeah, Rob. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would disagree. I think there's, there's plenty of information to make a good decision. That decision has to be no. Um, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> please, 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 please. please. Um, what I don't, um, you know, when, when I first was uh, running for office, we, we walked the neighborhood and, and people made comments about, oh, you know, you people, you know, the people up on the hill don't care about us down here. And I can't imagine proposing putting a 10 foot wide asphalt bike path through East Lane or Woodland Road or Midwood Road, uh, you know, where there would be individuals in some cases uh, five or 10 yards away from the back of people's homes. Uh, number one, so I, I just think there's a public safety issue. Number two, I don't think it's fair to ask the residents uh, uh, to sacrifice so much um, you know, for, as Bob pointed out, very little economic benefit um, to the town because really I couldn't imagine having a public bike path that close to my home. Um, that, number three, as a borough, you know, we f we've made long needed repairs uh, to the roads and drainage, most importantly the drainage in this neighborhood. So if I understood you correctly, by putting this bike path in, there will be significant drainage effects that we don't know what they are until after we pass the resolution. So we may have just wound up spending, I don't know, Bob, what do we spend on them? Half a million, something like that? Uh, for Pine Rose, Cedar Beach? Yes. For, you know, all this money just to, to, to come back to the same drainage problems we had before where some of the residents, uh, every time it rained, were, you know, were getting flooded, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the county, you know, is trying to improve open space. Um, again, I didn't know anything about this. I didn't see the letter until it was in the packet. I don't support it. The letter was not from me or my wishes, as, as the mayor said. And I just think, uh, while it may be well-intentioned, I don't think it's fair to ask the residents of this neighborhood to bear so much of the burden. Thank you. Don? Yeah. Um, first, I'm sorry. You're the messenger, so I yeah, apologize ahead of time. Who contacted you about this idea? Did someone contact it, 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 you? It's, it's a, again, a Mar Morris County 
Park Commission. Oh, no, no. Li I'm asking very specifically, does anyone imagine has to have this design idea move forward? I'm sorry, I just didn't hear the question. Don, Don, one, just one of the things we want to stay on is the fact well, that we're, we're going to be endorsing or not endorsing a, a recommendation from okay. the county, so let's not put poor Mr. Vital on the uh, witness stand as a... Oh, no, I'm you know. not. I'm asking him a simple question. Did someone in Madison give your department, your commission, an idea to make this up? Or do you guys just come up with this idea? Oh, uh, where did the idea come from? Yeah. This property was acquired quite a few years ago. So mm -hmm. I've been involved with the project for only six weeks. Uh, I think the property was acquired roughly 15 years ago. Uh -huh. And the right. idea uh, was there at that time. But uh, all we this came up with the idea to have a pair that ends nowhere. That, uh, well, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm yeah. not joking. That's a very fair See, question. This is my biggest problem with government. Yeah, very if fair you question. If have a problem, all I can, all I can where to spend a half a million, yeah. dump in our coffee. I'll show you how to spend it. And I love this. <laughs> Open space it is a heck of a threat to think of this as open space. That number two. As far as where did the idea come from? Yeah, that's, you know. it's, it's about 15 years ago the property was acquired and that's, that was the idea uh, at the time <coughs> to extend the, uh, the bikeway. In other words, we have 15 years ago someone thought this was a, a great idea? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay, and no one from Madison asked you to expand on the idea? Okay, I say this for you. To my knowledge, not until about six weeks ago when I was asked hmm. to get involved in the project. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I know that property out there. I've been on some of those backyards. I live on a lawn, not too far from them. I see. I live on the opposite side of the trail. If that trail was on my side, I would never have bought the house. And these people are correct. Their another thing, the quality of life will go down. The home values will go down. Please don't tell me I'm wrong. And they don't want it. Three simple things. I won't be voting for it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Doc, did you? Did you? No. No. Okay. Jeannie. Okay. Um, I don't think I need to repeat any of the stuff that already been discussed. Um, uh, there are plenty of serious issues that were mentioned uh, previously. Um, my question is that um, what does a no mean um, in terms of the resolution? If we voted no for the resolution, what does that mean? You're still going to go ahead applying for the grant and go ahead with the project or what's your next step? Next step will be up to the Park Commission. Uh, they'll, if, uh, if the vote should be no, mm -hmm. then the Park Commission would have to decide whether to continue to uh, submit the grant, which will have to be submitted, I think the deadline is, I think it's July 17th, so it really will have to go in this week. And uh, what the effect is on the application, well, that's going to be up to the reviewers at DOT. Okay, then if that's the case, I think it's pretty clear that, um, that we're not supporting, I think the message is loud and clear, that um, we're not supporting um, this project due to the various reasons that have already been discussed. And um, I think in addition to saying no to this resolution, perhaps um, the council should really put together a resolution to oppose um, the, um, the construction 
of, uh, of this, uh, of um, applying for the grant and also the, um, the completion of this project. Thank you, and whatever the council should decide, we would certainly appreciate it if you could do it in some form in writing to us. May I uh, So we can, um, I think um, if we probably don't need to wait to the vote on the, the resolution. You know what uh, the message will be, and it sounds like at the next council, council meeting there will probably be a resolution expressing the uh, feeling as far as the project going through, going forward. Um, I think you can also take back to the Park Commission the, some of the frustrations um, that were brought out. Yes, to, it will. To, yeah. And, uh, Dave, I'm sorry, I can't let you. There's another comment period later on, and you can uh, say something to that point. Um, I probably at this point should keep my mouth shut because I don't vote anyway. And, but if I were voting, I would probably support this because I truly believe that the future overall is a very well thought bike plan for this, not just the county, but for the country. We've got to get from point A to point B by using bicycles. One of my frustrations right now with the traction line is you get to get to the Ford Mansion and how do you get to downtown Morristown easily? I'll tell you how I do it is I get off my bicycle, I walk it across the bridge on 287 so I don't pedal against uh, the traffic there. You know, there are gaps throughout and I think if this was extended to Elm Street, it, it would bring maybe not tomorrow, but in future years, more and more bicyclists into town, and it would be a positive thing. I'm in the minority, I don't even get to vote, so, so be it. But I'm, I couldn't, couldn't sleep at night without saying that. <laughs> I, if I could make my last comment to you, uh, whatever the Park Commission makes a decision about doing, one of the most important things is an absolute open communication with this neighborhood. Absolutely. Okay. That was so very lacking. And, you know, they're sitting here very frustrated um, tonight. And we're sitting here without any information to kind of help them. So uh, we would, we would uh, ask for respect for each one of our residents, you know, if, if anybody is going on their property, and absolute, uh, um, you know, open communication with them. So I appreciate that. Thank you request to the council to have this consideration done. Uh, prior to coming with the Park Commission, I was a municipal engineer for 25 years, and I know the value of communication. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Have you said if the commission decides to move forward, it has to, they'll make a decision within the next seven or ten days. Is that right? I'm, I'm sorry. You okay. Can you We're going to vote now. You're going to go back. The commission can overturn us. Am I right? It, it's as far as moving forward, it, will, will there be action in the next two weeks before the next council meeting? Uh, I think the question is, should we act on our, on the council's resolution to objecting not only to the application, but to the project as a whole. Should we do that now so you can? Uh, I would suggest if you can do it tonight. Okay. Let's do it. Do it. And then I've got the answer because I do have to it. get the application in by the end of the week. Okay. <laughs> so okay. so we'll, we'll have the. Um, under new business. You can do uh, under new business. So, uh, okay. okay. Question. As a resident of the neighborhood, should I, am I allowed to vote on this? You can vote on it. You, okay. You don't have any director, direct pecuniary gain. So you absolutely can vote. Thank you very much. By the way, if you guys overturn us, tell the freeholds on public jams to see them. Okay, moving on to the next uh, agenda item, asset management program. Doc? Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Mayor. Um, for a little while now, I've been trying to uh, push for a um, a, a, a formal asset management program, um, specifically for the utility, since I'm utilities liaison. But uh, I've also heard from various residents here tonight that um, we probably need it for the entire borough, uh, which I think is a, it's an excellent idea. Um, what I would like to do, or what, what we should do, is uh, because of the fact that uh, our last meeting with the joint uh, sewer, that um, you know, over the next 
one to two years, we need to replace $3.6 million worth of equipment. Um, and up to uh, 2020, uh, probably an additional $2.5 million, um, which is a lot of money, especially coming from not only our municipality, which may be uh, around 60% or so, but also with the Chatham municipality as well. Um, uh, these are sort of things that I think we should look forward to. Um, we work uh, on a year-to-year -year basis sometimes here with budgets and so forth, but I think we have to have some sort of an asset management program, uh, not only for the utilities, but probably for others uh, as well. Um, you know, we have a, you know, as far as the electrical uh, department goes, you know, it's, a, it's a close to a $28 million revenue generator, um, which is, is quite an expense uh, if one of our substations happened to uh, catch fire or, or blow up. Um, there's a lot of underground transformers, above ground transformers, poles, wires, fixtures, um, uh, equipment, the, uh, the, uh, the department, uh, the, the, the power plant, uh, everything that's there, uh, we need to really take into consideration. Um, so, you know, I, I propose uh, with, uh, first with the electrical department that we get our uh, electrical engineer involved. Uh, which is the uh, Crane Associates. Uh, they've basically been around for many, many years. In fact, they, they kind of helped build our um, electrical infrastructure um, you know, from, I can't say from the beginning, but uh, you know, when, when we really uh, pushed it forward. Um, and I think we also should uh, look at the uh, uh, water and sewer as well. Uh, obviously, you know, our biggest uh, um, um, uh, problem is our North Street pump station. Of course, we have four other pump stations that are out there uh, that may require some uh, as well. But again, we, we need to put money aside to say, this is what we need in case something should happen, a, a rainy day fund. And, I, you know, and we, you know, when, we, when the borough had money in the past, um, it was, should have been thought about then. But you know, what's done is done. But we need to look forward now, and not only for the next year, but for the next five years, for the next 20 years, um, you know, for our next generations to build on. Um, so we really don't need to do that. There's a lot of things that are happening very, very quickly in this world. Um, and we need to uh, make sure that we keep up with that sort of thing. Um, you know, so I, I would also uh, recommend and ask um, uh, both water and sewer uh, from our uh, professional engineer to see if we can come up with an asset management to say, okay, what is our utilities cost? How much would it cost to replace our utility if something should happen? You know, if a main, if a tank fell for whatever reason, what does it take to, to replace that? Do we need a third tank uh, in the future? Uh, do we need more um, uh, filtration systems? Do we need more, um, uh, more protection from our, our, our pump station? So there's a lot of things that we need to do in order to do that. And I would just, I would just recommend that, that we just uh, if we can give consensus to go ahead and ask uh, if we can get Crane Associates to do our electrical department um, and, um, and, and uh, Mr. Vogel do our, uh, our water and sewer um, and then and give a presentation to us to say this is how much it costs, this is how much we will need next year, two years, five years, um, up to 2020 to see exactly what we need because uh, you know, by 2020, we're going to have to come up with six and a half million dollars to keep up with our sewage uh, because we hate to get that backed up. Um, um, which, um, you know, and, and again, this is necessary for, for generations to come to build on rather than just trying to go year by year or year sometimes that we do because emergencies do come up and we understand that. But I think we need a contingency plan in case these emergencies come up. And I think we also should kind of extrapolate that to, uh, you know, to the borough in general, you know, have a, you know, a, a, a asset, you know, in our, um, our infrastructure, which are basically our roads, uh, a facility management, asset management, which is our buildings. Um, you know, uh, it costs a lot of money to, to take care of this building. And, um, um, you know, I hate to have something go wrong and all of a sudden say, oh, we have to appropriate X amount of dollars to get it fixed when we have something on hand um, uh, already. Uh, and also, we, we still all have to think and maybe put into this somehow uh, is stormwater. I mean, we do have our stormwater system that's out there, um, and there's uh, regulations that are coming around to take care of those things as well, um, whether it's filters in some of our catch basins, whether it's the new, um, 
the, uh, the new castings that, that they have and, and things like that. So we need to get that all into consideration. You know, part of the water is also, it's not just when we open up our faucets, but it's also our hydrant system as well. Um, you, know, we, you know, we do have some uh, aging hydrants out there, and, and uh, fortunately we did replace one that looked like it was around when uh, uh, Mrs. Dodge was driving her, her car around uh, in town. I think it was on Treadwell, I believe. Um, so uh, we need to kind of really start looking into it and, and making sure that we get things done. And I think we should probably just not say, let's see what we can do about it. I think we should just, you know, get a consensus to give permission to our uh, administrators to say, let's get this uh, taken care of. So quickly uh, sum summarizing, the next steps one would be a proposal from Crane Associates on a uh, asset management plan for the electric utility and then a probably a work plan from engineering department on how they would uh, address the um, asset management plan for uh, water sewer. Is that uh, right? Yeah. From this point going on, I mean, you know, I'm sure North Street is going to cost a lot more than what we put away several years ago, um, especially when we're doing the uh, mains on uh, on uh, Park Avenue. So, you know, with all that into consideration, we have to say, well, what are our, what our next steps would be? So, but yes, whatever. Jenny? Yeah, um, Mayor, when you mentioned that um, have Crane Associate um, take a look at a plan, um, I'm assuming that will include a cost estimate. Um, am I understanding yes. that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Because a, this a, is a, a pretty major yeah, endeavor. Yeah, yeah. Asset management plan, which includes addressing, as um, Dr. Esposito presented the, using the um, joint meeting as example, it, it put, you know, itemized the projects, it put them as rated them critical, so, you know, there's a whole rating process as to the impact if it breaks down, if it's a low impact, mm -hmm. but high chance of it breaking down, that's one formula versus the other way, and, and so on. So there's a whole process for as asset management, so it's a uh, getting the proposal, they probably do that on a regular basis, so it's, um, they can come yes, up with also, what they cost. It'll also give us a, a good uh, maintenance programs as well for these utilities to try to see, okay, what do we need to do to keep these well maintained throughout the years um, uh, so we don't anticipate a, a breakdown. Um, will our current contract with uh, Crane cover the work for the proposal? I think uh, we got a contract on an hourly basis, but I'm not 100% right. sure yet. So I, I, I think something at this level, you would want to have a, an actual proposal a, uh, whether it's a not to exceed or a, um, a set price, because this is involved. You could, we could blow past our budget very quickly mm -hmm. with um, what we have allocated without uh, that knowledge. Bob? Doc, just two quick questions. To be clear, it would also include a contingency plan should any of these assets fail? Backup plans? Yes. Okay, and then would it make sense to include this in an overall capital plan for the borough? Yes. Okay, thank you. I, I see a lot of head, head nodding, so the process is to proceed and ask Crane. I, I think what would be very helpful is have Crane submit a proposal because that proposal will give us a nice little guideline for how we do the in-house work as far as exactly, because the end product should be similar. Because Just the Right. Yep. Okay, so we'll, we'll work with Crane on the proposal and then we'll start convert that for in-house. Thank you. Okay. Gardeners, thank you for hanging in there. If you're, uh, I see. So we've got um, the new Sustainable New Jersey uh, grant application. This is through PSNG. This is um, deadline for this grant is this Friday, so this is why this was not on the original agenda and we've put it in there and we have a um, posted a resolution basically on the outcome of this discussion. Uh, Chris, Margaret and uh, Stephen, I guess you want to come up and give us some background on the um, details of these, the grants, the amounts and what you need the council to do in 10 seconds or less. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, basically, um, we see, uh, would like to, uh, to get the council tonight to give us a, uh, a resolution to move forward in applying for this grant that will allow us to uh, begin to um, uh, pay for 
a, a greenhouse of some type at the garden. And the, the grant amount, which would be $20,000, way understand. Yeah, is, Margaret, maybe you can, there are a number of different grant amounts. So 20000 would be the one that we're going for, we're proposing going for, yeah. Right. The, the, our community is, is a bronze level community in the sustainable Jersey um, format. So we have a particular um, status within that small group of communities that are already designated as bronze. So the competition is, is much less than the entire state of New Jersey. It's, it's those few communities that are already designated as bronze. This particular opportunity was um, very exciting for the green team and the Sustainable Madison group because it allowed us to find another way and a fairly significant special way to achieve another round of points towards the goal of becoming the next level of a sustainable community. Um, so to get this, this, this grant, you can't apply for things like park benches or bike racks. It has to be a fairly unique project that in a significant way contributes to the sustainability of the whole community. So that's why we felt the greenhouse in whatever form it finally takes with its intentions to inter interconnect into the school system, serve the gardeners, act as a, as a possible source for information and um, good gardening techniques for members of the community at large, as well as gardeners that are in the actual garden. So that way we saw it as an opportunity to, um, to engage the whole community in this project. And that's one of the features that the Sustainable New Jersey people will require is that kind of community-wide integration. And and part of the goal of the 14 acres would purchase beside active and passive recreation was the educational goal. So this is kind of mirrors the, uh, the goal for that property. Yep. Um, and j just as a right now, because we haven't done a f final uh, hearing on the ordinance appointing our uh, community gardens committee, this is kind of a Informal, we've got a strong group of volunteers and this has been discussed and uh, this is coming from our unofficial group of uh, gardeners in, in a way. Is that fair to say? Yes, uh, it certainly is. This particular committee um, that grew uh, last year into what it is now uh, has been very hands-on. So we've been out there um, and this is kind of the philosophy we're sort of developing within our, within our garden community is to keep it, keep it simple, keep it close to the ground. So we were all out there last year digging up, vegetables, digging up shrubs and things that were in the way for the mowing that we would ask David Maines to do later. We're very actively involved in that way. And this is just another way for us to keep the, the, the sort of on the ground stuff happening uh, right in the garden and to help uh, in terms of budgeting to bring another source of funding into the process so it's not all about drawing down borough funds. Yeah. Okay. And um, you know, Stephen Stockford is here also because there's two, two pools of money from I understand and you had thought of an um, application for the, the other pool. Is it, you want to share that? <clears throat> It's my intention to apply for the $2,000 grant because uh, as with all grants, no, no grant is secure with bronze, but so are 180 other towns uh, in the state of New Jersey. So we have one shot for 20000 out of 188 and a potential real good bid from any one of 566 towns that really write up a beautiful that they can't resist giving mm. it to. But we have the edge because we're bronze. But uh, to my knowledge, no one else in this community uh, in sustainable Jersey, the newly formed <coughs> committee, uh, they really haven't had time to uh, think mm. about whether to put in for a grant. So I want to not leave that $2,000 out on, on the table. I want to apply for it to put in a much smaller project than Chris is envisioning. Uh, his project's going to grow into a big thing that will potentially reach through the school system and the county, other towns around us. Uh, mine is strictly for the gardeners in the community garden site altogether, uh, involving little 10 by 20 plots of where we'll put up a hoop house on heated 
and attempt to learn how to manage the humidity by manual uh, means and grow food 12 months out of the year rather than just that six months that we have at present on an open field. And uh, the rules of the situation uh, from PSE&G small grant program allows for us as a town to apply for both the $20,000 grant and the $2,000 grant. And there's the possibility on the merits of it that we could receive both grants but they will consider the $20,000 grant of this town first before they go to the $2,000 grant. At least that's what they said in their application form. And, and so that is my proposal, and I, I, I'm asking you all to uh, pass a resolution to allow both grants to, to uh, applications to go through. And again, with our informal garden committee so far, that's been discussed and uh, it's support level two. Yes, I've actually okay. already started yeah. working on building a hoop house in the plot that I have uh, been working since we opened up and uh, I've boxed it in and I have pipes to put in the hoop houses and stuff. But since no one else applied for a $2,000 grant with sustainable Jersey, uh, sustainable Madison, uh, I decided to see if I can get some more money and maybe do four plots instead of just yeah. one plot and have a bigger, a slightly bigger program than I had originally envisioned. <laughs> Mayor, um, I, I applaud you both of your idea on the um, ramp. I think it's great. And as you know, I've been trying to help you get the things you need down there off of the MRC. However, one thing, I have not seen a plan for what the greenhouse would look like. I don't know where you intend to put it. Therefore, um, I can't say something to yes unless I know exactly what you're trying to do. I've asked a number of people, I've asked Mr. Curry Bob, they don't even know where it's going to go. Well, which greenhouse are you talking yeah, about? Just, you know, just, just a little, little feedback again. Regretfully, we were doing things not in the best of order. One, this, this was an 11th hour addition to the agenda, and mainly it was driven by the deadline of this Friday. If, if, we, don't, if we miss next Friday, the next round is 2013, or is it later in the year? Yeah, or, fine. No, next year. Next, next year. So, I'm so not it's saying part of, don't do it. Of course do it. I want you to do it. But... How can we say that we're going to put a greenhouse out there when we have no idea, A, what is the size, what, hold on, what does it look like, and where? Now, we'll get there's another part of the MRC that needs to be remediated. It has a few small problems. One of them is arsenic. And that's from a greenhouse of a hundred years ago. How do I know that your greenhouse is okay when you haven't told us anything? Okay, hold, hold a second. Right. Wait, 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 okay. Yeah, Don, I, I, I don't know. as council liaison to the, I know, I to this informal it. committee, I, I'm sorry I didn't get the ordinance. I will. Yep. Um, we actually had um, a meeting, uh, out, uh, not last Saturday, the Saturday before where we discussed a number of things, including postponing, you know, resolution 2014, but also the idea of a, uh, of an overall plan uh, for the gardens. And not only did it include where the greenhouse would go, it, it included, you know, are we gonna put fruit trees, extra plots, bird houses, you know, beehives, things like that. So I promise you, it's in the works. Um, I have no problem with that. Yeah, yeah. But when we did the NYC, we told people, before, what we're going to look like and where. This, fair enough. This is a grant uh, application, so we shouldn't mix and match the two. No. I think, uh, while I, I agree your questions have merit, I'm confident that the, the leadership of the, of the committee uh, will come up with a spectacular plan um, in very short order. But in the meantime, I would ask 
that we stay focused on the issue at hand mm -hmm. and approve the resolutions. Um, I've spoken to Stephen about it uh, for his smaller grants uh, and, and also at the prior meeting we spoke uh, you know, underneath the tree. Um, we, we spoke about uh, the, the bigger, longer term plan. So. I'm happy with the grant. I really am. I say it's fantastic. Go for it. I won't say anything more about the greenhouse tonight. <laughs> and yet, yes, Jeannie. I um, second that. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at resolution, what is it, 180, whatever. Should we? Um, let me find a number. Yeah, we, we need uh, to include both. 186, should we revise that to say grants instead of grant? I believe so. I believe, right. uh, I believe that a resolution has to go separately with each grant. So we need another one, identical one? Yeah, well, that could be the same number, but it would have to delineate. One is for the large grant, 20000 That that the $20,000 grant would get that paperwork package would get shipped with, and then another resolution, the same number of resolution. Mentioned uh, in that is well, we'll, 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 let, we'll, we'll let our attorney uh, let us know whether we can do two for the bite of one or whether we have to do two separate uh, resolutions. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't 186 the last resolution on the uh, right. yep. agenda? Mm -hmm. So I, I, would, I would make one, 186 would be for the 20,000, and mm -hmm. we'd do one R187, for the two thousand dollar grant, we'd have two separate grants. And, and one it'll be the same resolution, but it'll just say uh, have created sustainable Jersey small grants funded by PC and G for this purpose, and we'll make the R eight one eighty six the twenty thousand and the R one eighty seven the two thousand. Yeah, because they go in as two separate packages. Yep. Uh, and on the two cover letters, so it would be. Okay, Carmela? I, I just wanted to make sure that they were both going to sustainable Jersey grant funded by PSE and J. Yes. That's real important. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. That, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your work and on behalf of uh, you know, getting funding from other sources and your patience in staying to the late hour here. Let's move on to uh, ordinances for hearing. Okay, Ordinance 11, 2012, was scheduled for hearing, was introduced by title and passed on first reading at a regular meeting of the council <coughs> held on June 11, 2012. Ordinance 12, 2012 through 16, 2012, were introduced by title and passed on first reading at a regular meeting of the council held on Wednesday, not Wednesday, on Monday, June 25th. They were all posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to, to the general public requesting same. I call up ordinances for second hearing and ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 11, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $20,000 from the electric, electric Capital Improvement Fund for purchase of LED light fixtures for the Cook Avenue parking lot. I open the hearing for anyone in public wishing to comment. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 11 2012. I second. Council discussion? Doc? Yes. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that I'm, I'm concerned about with this sort of thing. Um, I know there was been a couple that we had bought on these uh, uh, last year. One happens to be in front of my house because I wanted to see exactly what it was. Uh, although it's, it's very, it, it's a nice light, um, it's only one light. Um, you know, my concern is number one, putting in multiple lights at Cook Avenue, how is it going to affect the, um, the neighbors on the other side of Cook Avenue. Uh, number two, um, I don't know how many lights we need to order uh, in order to, to do this sort of thing. And number three, what are we basing our uh, comparison to? Um, you know, if, if these are costing six or seven hundred dollars a head, there may be other ones. In fact, there are other ones that are a lot less expensive. Unfortunately, um, as of tonight's meeting, I did not get the, the prices for these sort of things. We have them on this side of the table. We'll get them over to the other side of the table um, to, to look at them. But they're retrofit, and they'll fit a gooseneck type of light that we have throughout the town and also on Cook Avenue uh, 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 parking lot. Um, you know, so and these things are actually screwing like our screwing uh, bulbs that we have now. Um, so you know, it's it's maybe we should think about 
getting a few of these, but also comparing you to the other ones to see, okay, do we have to put in a whole new head, or can we just change it over uh, to one of these other ones? So, you know, that's my, you know, that's my uh, only concern is that, yes, you know, I, I do like to go green, um, you know, with this sort of thing, but not really the green that comes out of the taxpayer's pocket. So uh, I, I really, uh, you know, I, I'm ambivalent about this, and, uh, uh, you know, and I think, you know, maybe there's grants out there. Um, you know, one of these lights mentions, uh, you know, grants from the Department of Energy uh, that, uh, that supposedly has released or did release or whatever, um, you know, close to, um, uh, where is that number, $350 million for these sort of projects. And in fact, there's, there's one town around the same size as we are, but a little bit more, that got a grant to replace their entire town with these sort of lights. Um, so, you know, it's something that we need to look forward, maybe in the future. Yes, this sort of thing, we may need to kind of look and see which one it is, but I think we also should open our eyes to see what else that may be out there uh, in, in order uh, to do this. And maybe with that asset management uh, program, that can come into effect to say, okay, you know, even though this is not really, you know, a, a something that we do need to replace, but eventually, you know, since the 100 watt bulb is, is, is now in the Smithsonian Institute, you know, the 75 watt will be there, the 50 watt will be there over the next two, three, four years. So again, we'll lose that, and we'll probably even lose some of the other <coughs> lights that we have here. You know, maybe the high uh, sodium pressure lights may be our next on the hit list, or whatever else that we need to do. So, you know, that needs to be incorporated into this sort of thing to say, what are our options and, and what we need to do. So. Um, I know I've gone beyond my comments, and I apologize uh, for that, but I just wanted to, to let people know my opinion about this. Yes, we should get something like this, but I think we should test out and see if this light is better for us, or can we go to a lesser light uh, with that. Th that's maybe just my opinion, and I'm just... Uh, uh, and ju and I, I apologize, because one of the things we had said to do was when this was introduced, that we'd have some additional information. I think, Jim, you have information to share, and then we'll go back to uh, other comments. Thank you, Mayor. Apologize. Um, I did provide, we're getting all this feedback tonight. Um, I did provide Dr. Esposito with um, some information late this afternoon, um, not in regards to comparison of the LED lights that Superintendent Piano had selected versus the ones that he's advocating, but just more information on this particular uh, project that Michael's advancing. Um, specifically, that the re funding request would be to replace the lights just in the Cook Avenue parking lot, and Cook Plaza parking lot, and that uh, we have two lights there already that we've tested for 13 months that we're satisfied with. This. Funding would replace the rest of the heads that are there. It would increase, um, to a small extent, the amount of light, improve the lighting in there, which would increase safety. The electric consumption of the current bulbs versus the new LED bulbs will be reduced by 31%. So there'll be a 31% savings to the borough annually in the cost of the uh, having the lights there upgraded to LED. Um, in talking to Jim Matina today, he would take the existing bulbs out and not scrap them, but put them back in the inventory. So if we had a need to use them, they're, they're still usable bulbs that are actually there. Um, the thought process of replacing the bulbs again just in Cook Plaza is to do a continued test to see the viability of these lights over a longer period of time. These lights actually have a useful life, assuming 12, that they're burning about 12 hours a day, of over 18 years of actual no maintenance to them. And uh, as such, they also help to save the borough funds because the men aren't replacing the bulbs as, as frequently. It reduces man hours. Um, so that was the reasoning for uh, Superintendent Piano to advance this project. I don't have the reasons why he chose this particular light bulb, which is more expensive. I believe the one that Dr. Councilman Esposito is discussing, um, he had stated was around a $200 cost. These bulbs are closer to a, a five or $600 cost. So I don't have a reasoning why Mike Piano chose these over that. So I mean, council may wanna choose to, to, to hold off on this vote until we can get that information clarified if you want. One of the um, 
I have not read the ordinance recently, but um, basically it's just appropriating 20,000. It doesn't specify the, the bulb, the, the sure. method. So we could appropriate 20,000, spend less of it, yep. Yep, and sure. then retire the ordinance with a balance at some point. So that would be one. And, and we, with uh, Mike Piano coming back on board a after uh, a leave, he will be able to present you know, the, the final recommendation on the, on the bulbs. Okay. Okay. Is that? Okay. A any other comments or? Okay. Uh, vote please. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? No. Mr. Lynx? Uh, Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. I declare the aforementioned adop ordinance adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance to the law. Ordinance 12-2012. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 195-12A mm. of the Borough Code entitled Land Use Regarding Temporary Sign Permit to Establish Fees. I open the hearing. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Uh, may I move ordinance 12-2012? I second. Council discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. I declare the aforementioned adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file in accordance with the law. Ordinance 13, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 94, Appendix A of the Borough Code, entitled Electric Utility, regarding net metering. Mayor, before we go on, since it's 10 to 11, motion to extend the meeting 10 minutes. So, is that give us enough time? 11, 10? It's 30 minutes. 11.15, let's... Uh, 11.15? Yeah. yeah. And then we'll, and we'll, Extend we'll, the push, meeting. we'll push quickly here. Yeah. Extend Second. the meeting to 11.15. We'll Thank you. It. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you for having us. Going to call that in, in, in between. All right, back to... Um, we actually probably should have... Hold up, but we, we did just read the ordinance, so I open ordinance 13-2012. A hearing for anyone wishing to comment on. Please state your name, your address, and write the same on the sheet. I'll be very quick, obviously. Thank you. Uh, try, try not to take up time. My, my name is David Cohen. I live at 4 Westerly uh, Avenue. Um, first of all, I applaud the, um, the work uh, that's been done by the Environmental Commission in bringing this forward. Um, I've just, I became aware of it very recently. I actually, I'm one of the people in, in Madison who already do have solar panels on their house. And I wanted to uh, just make a couple comments and a quick clarification. The ordinance as it's written appears to say obtains, which seems to be, suggest future acquisition of uh, permits. I wanted to make sure that it was clear that it has a permit. Um, and it is actually the people who already have uh, solar panels in the town will be will be allowed to share in the same uh, plan that uh, the, the ordinance as is written suggests. The second thing I'd like to bring up is that when we switched uh, the billing system back in the beginning of this year, it was for the solar people, it was full of glitches. Um, I would hope that even though this should take effect immediately, it might be done in, in accordance with the billing uh, cycle as opposed to in the middle. I don't think anyone's prepared for that. Um, I, I received a shutoff notice um, when, I, when we switched billing systems last time without any, any, for, any a prior warning, uh, which is kind of a shock. And the third thing is, um, I know from the Environmental Commission report that um, the intent is to encourage more solar development, uh, more solar panels on people's roofs. One of the things that's, not, that's missing from the resolution and a little bit out of the discussion is a permanence to it. Obviously, you have the ability to put it in by resolution and take it away by resolution. Um, there's, no, there's no real commitment to it. And for a lot of people who are making that decision, it wasn't, wasn't a for first and foremost in my mind when I did it, but that they would want to see that the town is committed over some period of time. 
and uh, think about that. It's not in this yeah, world, yeah. but, uh, but as, as, it thinks, as the town thinks about its, its reaction in the future. Thank you. Well, I, I can answer. I think that the, the word who obtains it would apply uh, to anybody who has it, because if you look at um, under C, it talks about an electric customer who obtains a permit. Uh, so if you already have the existing thing, you would qualify under this ordinance so that's, as well. I just wanted to yes, clarify, because obtain seems ordinance. to indicate in the future. Right. So I think the, the, as, 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 as of this date. the reading of this covers anybody okay. who's done it or who obtains it in the future. Um, in terms of uh, your, your last issue, I can't talk about billing. That's the bill, well, the billing, is, but it does say immediately as opposed to on the next billing right. cycle, which would be a, would um, be a blessing, let, I think, to everyone. I'll let the electric utility deal with that. But the, the purpose of an ordinance um, is that this gives it some permanency. An ordinance survives year after year. It would require a first and second reading to amend it. And so the reason that the mayor and council are adopting this ordinance is to give permanency and to let the public know that I, this is a commitment on their part, I, I, uh, as opposed to resolution which dies each year. Okay, no, I understood, but it, it, obviously, but another ordinance right. could come forth, and yeah. there's there's no You're time right. there's no time horizon right. stated as to the, how long it should. And persist. we really couldn't do that. And no, I will. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 13-2012. I second it. Council discussion? Seeing none, vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. I declare the aforementioned adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish mm -hmm. notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance to the law. Ordinance 14-2012. Mayor, uh, I move to table ordinance 14-2012 uh, until further notice. I second that motion. Discussion? Vote? Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Uh, Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitell? Yes. Ordinance 15, 2012. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $50,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for emergency purchase of materials, equipment, and services for storm sewer rehabilitation. I open the hearing for Ordinance 15 2012. Anyone in the public wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close the hearing. Um, Mayor, I move Ordinance 15 2012. I second. Council discussion? Jeannie? Um, at, uh, at our last council meeting, we did mention that we were going to pursue sharing um, the cost with New Jersey Transit. How, how is that going and what are we going to do? Oh, Bob Bogle's here. He's been taking the lead. We haven't been doing well, Bob. <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, the New Jersey Transit has uh, New Jersey Transit, we've requested, uh, if, if not by cash, uh, for our uh, services in kind. Uh, I've asked them to provide uh, stone and, uh, and maintenance support services to refill some of the excavation that was, that was created there by the collapse of the pipe. And, uh, they've more or less agreed to do that. Uh, as far as sending them the bills are concerned, we have to actually pay those bills first and formalize that action before we send them a request for reimbursement. And you know that's going to take another couple of weeks before we get that done, since we've only passed the ordinance tonight. So in terms of procedure, we do intend to pursue them uh, for uh, some type of reimbursement. Uh, however, they are cooperating with us uh, at present, so that's a good thing. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Abstain. I declare the aforementioned adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 16, 2012. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison establishing the Madison Community Garden Advisory Committee. I open the hearing for anyone wishing to comment on Ordinance 16, 2012. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 16 2012. I second the motion. Council discussion? Let's 
Seeing none, vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. Okay, this is the second round of invitation for discussion. It is just about 11 o'clock. We still have a lot of work to do in the next 15 minutes. So please limit your comments to two minutes or less as you step up to the uh, lectern, state your name, your address, and I'll start the timer at that point. Anyone wishing to comment? Sam? Sam Searcy, all the park I have you mean I got two minutes? Two minutes, yep. After two and a half hours, three hours, I got to... You know, I, I apologize. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but... Well, you, let, you let everybody else talk a long time. Maybe, you know. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll just pick out a couple yep. of things. First of all, I want to compliment the council tonight for uh, two good decisions. The one with the bicycle trail, forget about it. We don't need one. I want one back in my house either. As far as Greenwood, Green Avenue... Um, it is bad. I, I drive it many times during the week. Can I just make a suggestion? And, and, and Rob, if I could, you know, you, like you said, you know, I, I, I got a good suggestion as being in construction. You can't, um, you can't just let this thing go for next year. If we get a nasty winter this year, it's going to be terrible. It's bad now. But what I would suggest, and it's going to cost maybe a few dollars, is that you can't just get the public works guys down there to, because they're real busy doing other things on that 49 acres just to go to Jager's and get a bag of black tar and put it in the hole. That's not going to work. It's going to last about a half hour. What I suggest, and we got some good qualified driveway people in Madison, because, like I said, if you don't do something, it's going to get real nasty. If we get a nasty winter, you've got to have a lot of suits. Right? But you've got to get somebody that knows how to fix a pothole. And there's a way, you can't just, like I say, put a bag of black tar in there. You got to get someone that's a professional, cut it out, and put, do it right. And, and that's what I would suggest you do on Greenwood Avenue. There is a few real bad spots. But again, like I said, it's going to cost a few dollars. But don't just leave it the way it is, because it's going to cost us a lot of money in the long run. And then, two, when you've got to do it, let's, let's do it right. Like, have a plan. Um, and again, I keep saying, forget about that low bidder and rush this thing through. You need a plan. Because if you don't, it would happen like on South Street. You got, it's like a roller coaster. We just had a brand new, uh, right down South Street. It's only been done not even a year ago. But it's like a roller coaster. Come out of the streets too. But that, that's, uh, my, all right. Just one more thing. Yep. Go ahead. One more thing. One more quick one. Yep. Can I have an update on the police department situation? Was it resolved? Was it Chief Rice? What was the cost to the taxpayers, Inclu not including the insurance company? Can I have those answers? The, as you're aware, the governing body passed a resolution, I believe, two meetings ago to authorize the insurance company uh, to settle the, the matter. Uh, the matter was settled. Um, we are, <clears throat> I can't give you off the top of my head what the cost is to the borough. The borough has uh, a copay uh, or a deductible to make it in, 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 in more standard terms. They have a $20,000 deductible and then they have to pay 20% up to I think the first $250,000. So the exposure to the borough in any lawsuit, anytime there's a payment, is approximately $75,000 uh, that the borough is basically mm -hmm. self-insured for the first $75,000 and that would be involved in any lawsuit. Um, other than that, I can't give you any of the specifics because I don't have them off the top of my head. Uh, we have not raced the chief this evening. Um, as I told you, uh, I said before, uh, if there's an issue with the chief, it's not for this governing body to uh, deal with any type of uh, complaints or, uh, or uh, belief that if a chief of police, not necessarily this chief, any chief, under the Attorney General guidelines, we have to go to the Morris County Prosecutor's Office and refer it to the Prosecutor's Office uh, for their review and determination of whether an internal affairs investigation must ensue. Um, so other than that, I can't comment um, beyond what I've said at the, the prior meetings, uh, including this comment. 
So as we just, uh, as far as now, we cost the taxpayers a mass of seventy thousand uh, dollars. As I already said, sir, I don't know the exact figure. I was telling you what the what the minimum exposure. That was the minimum exposure. Uh, I don't know the exact figure off the top of my head this evening. I'm not prepared to answer that question. Uh, but I'd be glad if you want to call uh, Mr. Cody uh, later this week. I'll have that figure for you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? John? Carmen, you'll, you'll be next so you can move towards the front to keep things moving along. Uh, John Morris, uh, 27 Bev Report. Uh, I'm talking about the traction line path extension proposal. I'm just sorry the county didn't have more information about safety and actually how it might work and what the footprint might be because I think it's an awesome opportunity for Madison. Uh, we've seen bike paths in New York City recently, along to Delaware and Lambertville, and they're really awesome community things. Um, again, I, I just hope it's not a lost opportunity, especially when someone else is footing the bill. I think it would be awesome because it would connect downtown with Morristown and also with the neighborhoods in one way or another. So for what it's worth, that's what I have to say. I am a cyclist. I use the path all the time. I see people there all the time. Never see anything sketchy, anything else like that. I think it's a great resource, and a resource, and it was just longer. Thank you. Thank you. I want to take two minutes. All right. <coughs> I'm moving quick without because I have short talk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They're not as nice as my shirt that I usually wear, but it's fine. Carmen Pico, North Street. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask is th the people were here tonight because there was a project being done behind their houses and they didn't know anything about it. Living on North Street, uh, the gas company came and marked up half of North Street, and I don't know why they marked it up. If, are they going to dig it up again, or what's, does the council know what's going on? I was told that um, the upper part of North Street, from East Street to Burnett Road, was already done with the with the force main. Are they going to be digging that up again? No force main is going to replace anywhere. Okay, so whoever told me that was wrong, but they just paved North Street about, I believe, almost 10 years ago, and it's, it's nice and smooth. By the time the, the gas company gets done with it, it's going to be like the upper part of North Street, where they just patch, patch the road and it's not going to be good anymore. Okay, okay, right. The other thing is, <clears throat> I don't believe I'm, I'm doing this, but I have to agree with Sammy as far as patching Green Avenue. I was going to make that suggestion myself because if you just patch a hole, now you have a patch, but now you have a bump where that patch was because it, it never gets smooth with the road. And if you have a lot of patches within, let's say, a 10 by 10 area, you're better off cutting it out and after you cut it out, take the material off, you'll find out if there's any problems underneath the road at the same time. So if there is, you can repair the problem and then patch it so that when the cars go over it, they're not going over five or six patches, they're only going over one big square. So that, that would be a suggestion. Maybe the engineer could, could have some input on that. Because it, if it's going to take until next year to, to repave that road, and uh, like Sammy said, if we have a bad... Uh, bad winter, the big patches be more better than uh, the little patches. Okay. Thank, thank, and you. That's it. thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. Introduction of ordinances. Okay. The ordinance scheduled for first reading has a hearing date set for July the 23rd, 2012. will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the Bolton Board Town Hall, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up the ordinance for first hearing and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 17 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending <coughs> Chapter 190 25B of the Borough Code regarding mandatory testing of water meters larger than two inches. Mayor, I move Ordinance 17 2012. I second it. Council discussion? Seeing none, vote. 
Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. Consent agenda resolutions. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. So we'll pull 177 and do that separately. Um, and, then, and then we added 187, which is... The $2,000 grant. Right. So the 186 will be the $20,000 grant and 187, $2,000 grant. Question about 186. Do we need to add anything to to say it's 20000 Yeah, we, he added it. I wrote it in. So, okay, you wrote it in. Okay. Yeah, at the end I added in uh, the, the state of New Jersey for a $20,000 grant, then $2,700 yeah, for the $2,000 grant. Okay. Mayor, I move resolution 177 2012. Second. This Second. Is, yeah, this is the one we're doing separately. Well, well the yeah, thing yeah. is, don't we want a new resolution? Yeah, I already Yeah, but we're going to do that okay. under new, new business. So we're, okay. uh, th this is supporting the, the uh, grant application by the county parks. What I would suggest that you guys do is do the consent ordinances from 178 uh, through 187. Do that first? consent order. Do that okay, first. Yeah. okay, we can do that. Um, I move resolution 178-2012 through R183-2012 and R185-2012 through... Um, well, R185-2012, R186-2012 as amended, and R187-2012. Second. Second. Discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes and no to 179. Uh, Mr. Links? Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. Mayor, I move resolution 177-2012. Second. Discussion? Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? No. Dr. Esposito? No. Mr. Links? No. Mr. Catalanello? No. Mr. Landrigan? No. Mrs. Vitelli? No. Okay, unfinished business? Under new business. Yeah, we'll do it okay. under new business. There is no unfinished business. Okay. So we'll, uh, approval of vouchers. Okay, public safety, $16,237.71. Health and public assistance, $1,967.87. Public works and engineering, $146,010.63. Community affairs, $1,334.02. Finance and borough clerk, $4,208,170.47. Utilities, $193,755.73. Total is four million five hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred seventy-six dollars and forty-three cents. Mayor, I move the vouchers for approval. Second. Discussion. Vote. Mrs. Sukamoto. Yes. Dr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Links. Yeah. Mr. Catalanello. Yes. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitelli. Yes. Okay, new business, uh, Matt, you so said you've got yeah, it. I have a new ordinance. Uh, with a resolution. A resolution, uh, R188-2012, and I'll read it into the record. Uh, resolution of the Borough of Madison opposing the construction of a paved extension by the Morris County Parks Commission to the traction line pedestrian walkway and bikeway trail. And it reads, it reads as follows. Whereas mm -hmm. the Morris County Park Commission has proposed the construction of a paved pedestrian walkway and bikeway adjacent to the northerly side of lands of the New Jersey Transit Railway, and whereas the Morris County Park Commission intends to seek a $545,000 grant from the New Jersey Department of Transportation, and whereas numerous residents <coughs> attended the July 9, 2012 council meeting and spoke against the expansion of the traction line through their neighborhood, and whereas this proposed extension of the traction line trail will negatively impact the quality of life for the residents 
immediately adjacent to the expansion area and unnecessarily, unnecessarily create a public safety hazard. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Council of the Borough of Madison in the County of Morris and State of New Jersey that the Madison Borough Council opposes the construction by the Morris County Parks Commission of a paved extension of the Traction Line Trail from the existing Traction Line Trail terminus at Danforth Road to Elm Street in the Borough of Madison and directs the Borough Clerk to provide a certified copy of this resolution to the Morris County Park Commission, the Morris County Board of Chosen Freeholders, the Commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Transportation, and our state legislative delegation. Sounds like you got that covered. I have a motion. Move resolution 188-2012. Second. Second. Okay. Thank you. Discussion? Vote. Mr. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Okay. Carmel? Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. We went, went over by 27 seconds. But, uh, Thank you. Well done on that. that. <laughs> Already helped. Well done. Where do you think your lawyers need to